Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is Wednesday night, and I am live. So I couldn't do my normal, uh, well, I say normal, I did it for two weeks in a row, but I couldn't do my normal Tuesday night live stream because I was on Bob's Blu-rays channel last night uh, doing a fun um, live stream like game night type of thing where he asked us to pick a bunch of movies off the shelf. We were competing against each other. It was called Think Fast. Uh, so he would ask a question, then we would go run and, and grab a movie, and we couldn't match it with anybody else. So it, it was a pretty fun time. Go check out the replay if you missed it. But I was over there, so I couldn't do the live stream. But I'm like, you know what? I'm not missing this week. I, I did the live stream on Monday uh, last week for the Vinegar Syndrome announcements. So I'm, I'm back Wednesday night. I'm here, guys. Um, I hope you're excited. Uh, but if you can, hit the like button for me if you haven't already. And feel free to start firing questions. That's what this stream is all about. I've got one topic to get into, um, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, we're just going to be answering questions and and same old, same old with these type of live streams. So hit the like button for me if you can. Start asking your questions. And um, yeah, let's get into it. How's everybody been? How's everybody been this week? Uh, what did you pick up yesterday? It was Blues Day Tuesday. What were the new releases that you grabbed? I'll be honest. I I didn't really get anything. I didn't really get anything this week. I do have um, the Mean Guns MVD Rewind release in that I tried to, to watch last night. Um, and I got like halfway through it. That's a wild movie. So I'm, I'm hoping to talk about that one soon on the channel. And I also have, I, I got the replacement disc for Joysticks. Um, so I want to watch this one as well soon. And maybe I'll do a video on both of them um, when I do. But yeah, what have you guys picked up? What's been going on? What have you been watching? Let me know, guys. Let me know in the chat. I'd like to know what you guys are up to. 86 people in here. 88 people in here. And I promised on Instagram that we were going to be talking all things ladies man here tonight on the stream. I do have ladies man on, on the TV. I, I like having, I, I try to change it up, put different stuff. And I like the DVD menus. Like those have been working pretty good for me. Um, so yeah, I, I went in the closet. I was like, what DVD do I want to put on tonight? And I was like the ladies man. I haven't seen that movie in probably, I don't know, five years or so. It's, it was fairly recently, I feel like, but it's such an underrated comedy. I feel like I'm going to watch it like right when the stream goes off tonight. Um, Tim Meadows like himself is just maybe one of the most underrated comedians of all time. I feel like he should have been like one of the biggest stars of like the two thousands. Like he should have been doing the comedies like Will Ferrell and, and Ben Stiller and everybody else. Like he has such great timing. And every time he's on screen, I cannot help but smile and laugh. Like even when it's just a really small part in like the office, like he was in one of the episodes of the office and I, I love that episode so much, but he's great and everything. He was great on SNL. I used to watch him all the time when I was a kid, but the ladies, man, guys, I, I got this on DVD and I was like, does this have a Blu-ray? So I looked it up. Because uh, I always wonder, like, why do I have something? Usually there's a reason if I have something on DVD. Uh, but this does have a Blu-ray. This has a Blu-ray for about $22 or $23. It's a Paramount title. So, yeah, Paramount put this one out, uh, I think, back in 2012. So I'll have to get the Blu-ray at some point. But as for right now, I'm I'm good with a DVD. I probably got this for like a dollar at a Goodwill or something. But you can't beat the ladies, man. And I was looking on the back. You've got uh, Tip Tiffany Amber Thiessen's in this movie. It looks like Billy D. Williams is in this movie. Um, I, I gotta, I gotta check this one out tonight. I gotta, I gotta rewatch this tonight because uh, it's, it's been way too long. Uh, but I spent way too long rambling. 105 people in the chat. Hit the like button if you have right. We're our, we're only six minutes in. However, over 100 people, guys. That's amazing. And I threw this together like an hour ago. Um, I got some coffee. I do have some coffee. I'm drinking some Tim Hortons, some Canadian coffee. So. If you guys haven't checked out uh, my wife and I's channel, Mary with Media, we did a fun taste testing video of some Canadian snacks that a subscriber sent us. Um, so I do have that link down below. You can hit that link. You, you can subscribe to Mary with Media and watch that video. It's about 20 minutes long. But we're taste testing all of these like cereals and candies and cookies and all kinds of stuff. And one of the items was this coffee, but we didn't brew the coffee in the video. I brewed it now. So now I'm trying it. And it is very tasty. It's a very nice coffee. I do like the coffee. It's in my 
to my nice Halloween two mug that I got from Spirit Halloween. And I guess I, I should have probably asked, can you guys hear me? I hope you guys can hear me. I've been rambling a lot uh, for you guys to not hear me by now. We got fish here. What's up, fish? Um, but yeah, it looks like you guys can hear me. I always I always forget to ask that. Okay, let's get into the chat. We got Tyler uh, or Tyrek. Uh, Daniel says, "Do Saul ten film collection Blu Ray DVD walkthrough." Um, do you want me to unbox that again? I, I did that on the channel. Uh, Ty Tyrek, is that how you pronounce your name? Um, I did that on the channel already. I did a whole unboxing video. Go check it out because it's one of my better videos where I actually did an intro that uh, went over pretty well. I feel like I haven't done it since. Um, but maybe I'll do more intros in the future like that. Um, we got Huck here. It was Huck's birthday today. Huck over at Huck's Pop Culture Cafe. Happy birthday, Huck. Um, hey, Ken, heading out for my B-Day, but have a great show. I'll catch the replay. Uh, thank you so much, Huck. I hope you have a great, I hope you had a great birthday and I hope you continue to have a great birthday uh, tonight. Um, Sean is here. Hello, Ken. I'm interested in getting a YouTube channel started because of you, Tony, Bob, Garrett, Sean, Cody Leach. I love talking about movies and collecting them and um or I just don't know how to get started. Um that's a that's a good question, Sean. That's honestly like I could do an entire video um on that, but my my biggest advice to starting a YouTube channel is you have a phone, um just put it in front of you on a stand and just start shooting and recording and just start talking in front of the camera cuz honestly that's the hardest part to get used to talking to a camera that's in front of you, that's looking at you. You're looking at yourself um, while you're recording. It's very weird. It's very weird. So get used to that. And, um, you know, I, I would definitely recommend getting some kind of basic editor, just downloading one, or maybe your phone already comes with one. And Definitely do some editings. If you flub up or something like that, go in there, try to take that out and get maybe don't maybe you don't have to do that the first time. But I would definitely recommend, you know, getting some kind of an editor to edit yourself and all the other stuff you can work on um, as you go, like the intros. There's very easy, you know, websites and stuff you can get on to to download your intros. All my stuff, guys, as you can notice, probably by now is very basic. Like my production value, which I, I hope to work on um, at some point is is low, I feel like. But I do, I feel like have a, a good handle on how to edit myself. And um, yeah, do, but the biggest, the biggest thing, man, is just getting in front of the camera and starting to shoot yourself. And as long as you get yourself a tripod, set your phone up on the tripod. Um, I would also recommend getting like a lavalier mic or something that clips to you. Um, those are pretty cheap. It's like 15, 20 bucks. You can just plug it in, hook it up to yourself. They they sound good. Um, so I definitely recommend that you, um, you know, you don't have to have the best mics in the world, but sound is important. Uh, you know, when when you have a channel, you need to have a, a decent microphone. Otherwise, people are going to, you're going to sound like you're underwater um, when you're talking and people will click off the video real fast that way. Um, and I'm just trying to throw out everything. Um but, uh, you know, it, relax, have a good time, talk about stuff that you're interested in, talk about stuff that you're passionate in. And, um, you know, don't just take it easy and take it one day at a time. Don't freak out if you put up a video and it only gets two views because the next video might get 500 views um, and just keep at it, you know, keep at it. But that's that's about the only advice I can give as of right now. I hope that was decent enough advice for you, um, Sean. Let's see. Uh, do you have any, do you think you have any advice for me? Yeah, I hope that helped. Um, and you know, if you're wanting to do like some kind of like a collection, uh, channel or blue, blue, Blu-ray channel, or you want to show off your Blu-rays, I would recommend starting simple, you know, doing some unboxings, doing, um, some, uh, just, this is my screen factor collection. This is my DVD collection, you know, videos like that, you know, that they, they, those really help get you started. I feel like the Blu-ray hunts really helped get me, um, started for sure. Um, but it, it's just talking about a lot of things, you know, at once kind of moving from one thing to the other. I find that to be easier than honing in on like one specific release. Like I still have trouble like doing like standalone reviews. Um, but yeah, 
Sean Fisher says, I was also wondering when I get the ball rolling on a channel with you doing a video with me about collecting. I would love to have a conversation with you, man. Yet when you get things started, just reach out. And if I'm available and if I'm able to do so, um, I would be glad to. I'd be glad to. Uh, ben Dover's here. We got Ben Dover. What's up, Ben Dover? Classic. Um, hi, Kenneth. Uh, glad I could catch the live stream this time. I'm glad you could be here, Ben Dover. Uh, keep the work. I respect you and everyone that puts themselves out there to make these videos that puts themselves out there to make these videos for us. Yeah, it's uh, it's not easy, man. It's really not easy when you're when you're first getting started. And I, you can go back and check out some of my earlier videos. I did not know how to present myself to the camera, how to talk to the camera. But I still I feel I feel like I don't know how to do that now. Um, but I was very monotone. I was very just like, oh, oh, this is my. This is my Blu-ray of joysticks. This is my blah, blah, blah. I thought this movie was pretty good. I thought this movie sucked. You know, and um, I, I feel like I've grown somewhat since then. We got Adrian James here. Hey, Ken. Or, hey there, Ken. How are you doing? What's up, Adrian? How are you doing, buddy? Uh, Kevin Kruger says, top five Gene Hackman movies. Um, I'll be honest, man. I, off the top of my head, I know I've seen Gene Hackman, five Gene Hackman movies, but I can't think of five off the top of my head. Um, I haven't seen enough, obviously, if I can't take, think of five off the top of my head. But I would say like the Royal Tenenbaums, um, definitely Enemy of the States, um, Welcome to Mooseport, way up there. Uh, no, that's how you can tell I haven't seen enough uh, Gene Hackman films. I'm, I'm saying Welcome to Mooseport is one of my uh, favorite Gene Hackman movies. That was his last movie, by the way, with Ray Romano. 2003 he retired after that um I, i'm sure i've seen five though i i just can't think off the top of my head uh let's see better actor harrison ford or brad pitt um and that's a tough one that's they're both great um i would say more iconic actor with more iconic roles is harrison ford um but if you're just like boiling it down to like who has the most talent as an actor I'd say it's pretty dead even. Like I, I would that would be something I had to break down their filmographies and put pit this performance versus this this performance. Like that's that would be hard. I mean, but which one do I prefer? I, I got to go Harrison. I mean, he just got he's his filmography just means too much to me. Like with Star Wars and um, you know Air Force One and and some of those other movies and recently Witness and Fugitive I watched and really loved. Of course Indiana Jones as well. So six days, seven nights. He's got so many movies that I used to watch all the time when I was a kid. And, and Brad Pitt did too, but I just don't feel like his filmography means as much to me as Harrison Ford's does. Um, the ladies man looking for his sweet thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, when they should be announced the release date for the Rocky Steel book uh, for five and six. I don't know, uh, Mila. I don't know. Um, and I did leave something out of the physical media report on on Monday. So both versions, why well, let me bring this up, guys. Let me bring up Groove. Both of the Rocky Steel books, I think, are supposed to have both cuts. Um, two cuts on them. I know that Balboa does. Um, Balboa says it on there. But then Rocky Five. Uh, trying to see if it says it on there. I'm bringing this up. I, I'm not going to bother sharing it just yet. Um, I'm not seeing where Rocky five has, has two cuts, but, um, uh, but maybe it does, but Balboa has it right on the cover. So you're going to get the director's cut and the theatrical cut, um, of Balboa as for when they're going to be announced. I really have no idea. Um, at this point, if I had to guess, I would speculate, July, maybe because they're being shown right now. I, I would speculate June or July. If I had to guess. Do you still collect DVDs for nostalgia? Um, yeah, that's and there's some that I don't think will ever get upgraded. And if I really like the movie or if I'm interested in the movie, then I want to grab it just in case it never gets upgraded. And if it gets upgraded, um, you know. Who cares? I, I only spend a dollar on it because that's usually my rule with uh, with DVDs. I'm only going to spend a dollar on it. Um, but yeah, definitely. It's it's cool to have DVDs. DVDs are definitely a little bit more back in, I feel like, in, in recent uh, in recent months, really. Uh, what's up, Gus? How are you doing, buddy? 
Uh, get any new subscriber media. Been a while since I've seen any updates. I do have one package, I think, that I got last week. Um, but I have been doing my subscriber mail in my Physical Media Lives episodes. So if you want to check out subscriber mail, you have to check out those episodes because usually I do them at the very end um, of the Physical Media Lives episodes. I just kind of lumped them into there instead of doing them standalone. Um, let's see. Rob Zillis here. What's everyone What's everyone talking about? Um, well, well, not too much yet, man. We're, we're working on getting some topics going. Don Morton says greetings programs. Uh, we got, uh, dead boy Deeks. When W stream, let's go. Hell yeah. I'm a W stream now. We got Foz rotten in here. What's going on, man? Any tips on custom shelving or a good place to get shelves? So I, I don't have any custom shelves. Like all my shelves have come from Amazon. So those behind me are Atlanta elite media shelves. Um, and I've got five of them. And look, I started collecting them, I think, back in 2018. So they've held up pretty good for me. So I would recommend them. The only thing is, is sometimes they can be a little, not too pricey, but sometimes they can be like 100, 110. And then sometimes randomly they'll drop to like 70 bucks. So I would recommend just keeping your eye on them because they can fluctuate a lot. Like they can go from 70 to 90 to 110 back down. But just look up Atlanta Media Shelves. You'll see a variety of different options. Um, there's the smaller ones, of course, but the ones behind me, they hold like 650 Blu-rays, I believe. Um, but yeah, as for the custom stuff, I, I don't know too much about that. Uh, what's going on, Johnny? What's up, cool kids? How you doing, Johnny? Uh, we got Dimension Scott in here. What's up, Ken? How are you doing tonight? I just finished watching you and your wife's snack video. Awesome, man. Thank you for the promotion, Dimitri. I promoted it when I started, but yes. If you haven't yet subscribed to Mary with Media, guys, do so. We did. We taste tested some Canadian snack uh, mix earlier today, and I'm drinking uh, the Canadian coffee, Tim Hortons, right now. And guys, I just realized I'm still at like 10:01 in the chat, so I need to catch up. Uh, <laughs> we got Eli Cortez here. What's up, uh, Eli? We got Scott. Uh, hey, again, thanks for doing a lot tonight. I was also curious about the subject: uh, Blu-ray and 4K comeback. Yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Basically, I'm just seeing more and more like articles and videos now um, of people promoting physical media and saying that it's coming back into style and that it's cool again. So I thought we would talk about that for a little bit tonight. That's all that means. Um, oh, thank you so much, Foz. I appreciate that. Demolished. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we got Dino here. Uh, what's up, Ken? Thank you. Thank for the. Thank for you help. <laughs> I'm assuming thank you for the help and information on all the physical media with your all of your updates almost daily. Yeah, I, I try to update every day, man. I really do. Um, and damn it, my freaking ladies man went off the TV. Let me turn that back on. Sometimes I'll get a DVD menu that sticks and it stays on. Sometimes it just shuts off and it, it irritates me when I'm doing a video. Um, if I can get it back on. But um because then that stupid blue light comes up, and I don't like it. What's up, Christian? How are you doing tonight, Christian Lazo? Um, but yeah, speaking on the videos daily, I mean, I'm I'm motivated right now, guys. I'm trying to ramp things up and get things going. You know, there's there's big things coming. There is big things coming for this channel. There's big things coming from my, from my wife and I's channel, Married with Media. We're motivated. We're moving. Uh, we got Born Pasta here. What's up? Hey, Ken. Nice to see you, Born Pasta. I don't think I've seen you here before. Uh, David Castillo says, what's up, movie heads? What's up, David? Uh, welcome to Wednesday Night Live. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I don't do the Wednesdays a lot. I don't do the Wednesdays a lot. But um, I do like the Tuesdays. I do like my Tuesdays. Uh, we got Eli here. Hey, Ken, are you picking up the Houses of Doom box set from Cauldron Films? Looks killer and limited to only 2,500 copies. Probably not, because if it's coming from Cauldron Films and it's a box set, it probably costs like $500. Uh, so I probably uh, won't be getting that one. Um, let me see. 
the movie started playing. There we go. My menu's back. It'll go out in like 15 minutes. I don't even know why I'm doing it. But no, I'm, I'm not going to get that because I, I mean, I'm not familiar with the films and uh, I don't know what the cost is. And um, yeah, I'm really trying to cut back, guys. I really I don't know if you guys have noticed. Um, probably not because I'm doing like haul videos every single day and, and saying I got 16 Kino Lorber titles. Uh, but I really am. I really am trying to cut back. I really am. I'm trying. Uh, so I probably not, won't be getting that though, man. But if you want to get it, go for it, man. Uh, La Cryptic Video Club. Hey, Ken, what's up, man? Uh, what happened to 4K D-Ray, says Kevin Krieger. He's on Instagram. I still see him on Instagram. I, I think he just got um, I think he just got burned out. I mean, it happens. Like I, I'm burned out sometimes too. Um, but uh, I, I'm sure he'll be back at some point. I'm sure he'll be back at some point. But uh, he's living life, you know. Some people don't want to live on the internet all the time. And I, I get that. I understand that. Hype is here. Media bought Night Swim because of Blumhouse and Juan. Uh, it was decent, not great. Speaking of Night Swim, uh, my wife and I actually watched that right before I went live tonight. And we'll be doing a review of it uh, very soon on our channel. So I'm not going to say anything about it. Because if you want my thoughts, you can go check out that uh, that review. But we did watch it. Uh, Daniel Banks says, just got the Warriors on 4K from the Arrow sale. Awesome. That, that to me was the best 4K of 2023. Hands down. Hands down. Uh, Born Pasta said, hey, Ken, what do you think of Manchester by the Sea? So I do have this movie um, over there in the collection somewhere. I think I uh, that was nominated for Best Picture in, in 2017, or it came out in 2016 and nominated in 2017. And that was back in the era where I was trying to watch as many new movies as I possibly could. So I was watching all the Best Picture nominees and everything. So I did watch the movie. From what I remember... It's just a tough movie to watch. And it's a movie that I feel like goes so far over the top with what happens to Casey Affleck and Michelle Williams that I'm just like, I almost can't take it seriously. And it's extremely sad, but it's like, it's just so, what happens to them is so horrific and awful. I'm just like, how does this happen to anyone? And how do they even, how are they even standing? to even be able to function, to be able to walk. It's hard for me to buy into that kind of stuff. And it's very well acted and it's very well directed. But I just, when it's it comes to the, that kind of like, what I call it, it's like grief porn, <laughs> pretty much. It's just a movie with such heavy grief all throughout that it's just like so hard to stomach and sit through. And it just borderlines on ridiculous. And when you get done with it, you're like, I'm not watching that again. Uh, <laughs> never, which I'll, I'll probably watch it at some point, but, um, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's too much. It's just too much. Um, we got Yoshi bear here. What's up, Yoshi? Uh, we got last thing I got was creature from the black lagoon 4k. That's a great 4k though. It's great 4k. What's up fish. Um, I have seen cobweb. I've seen both. Um, Cobweb, me and my wife did review on our channel last year, and I do have it on Blu-ray, and I 100% recommend it. That was probably, I would say that was probably in my top 10 movies of uh, of 2023. I loved it. It was definitely like maybe top two horror films of last year as well. Um, I thought it was better than Talk to Me. I thought it was better than Scream 6. I thought it was better than Evil Dead Rise. Like most, all, most all horror movies that came out last year, I thought Cobweb is better. Um, I enjoy that movie a lot. It gets very wacky at the end, but that's kind of how I like my movies anyway. Um, so it's fine. Let's see. I pre-ordered Immaculate, but it's only coming out in Blu-ray, no 4K. Um, yeah, I mean, with with that movie, with, with it coming out through Decal, it's possible it could get a 4K at some point because Decal's kind of known for that. They did that with Crimes of the Future. They did that with... I think Infinity Pool was also a decal as well. So they did a steel book of Infinity Pool a little bit later on. I don't know if Immaculate will get that same treatment because you got to think with, with Infinity Pool and uh, Crimes of the Future, that's David Cronenberg. Um, so they, they know that's probably going to sell a little bit more than Immaculate. As much as I love that filmmaker because he does watch my channel and I think that's super cool. Um I don't know if that'll get a 4K. I would love for it to get a 4K, maybe from second sight at some point. Now, I'm not saying it, it never will, but I don't think it will in the near future. So you're probably 
good with the Blu-ray. Uh, let's see. We've got Christian here. Uh, do you think you could go one month without adding anything to the collection? That's a that's a great challenge. And I, I look, Chris, I've honestly thought about that. I, I thought about that very recently. I was like, you know what? I need to try this. I need to just to just to prove it to myself that I can do it. Can I go one month without buying anything? Now it would be hard without adding anything, anything to the collection because I do get screeners and review copies from certain studios and labels. So they're still going to send me the stuff regardless of what month it is. But could I go a month without buying anything um, at all? I think I could do it. I think I could do it. Um, and you might see something like that come very soon. Very soon. Just saying. Uh, we got Johnny with the fishes. D Dino says, will my pre-ordered Crow 4K Steelbook have Dolby Atmos? I just received the 88 Films uh, Amityville and German media media book of Phantasm on 4K with the beautiful D Devin Whitehead artwork. You got to see them. That a Amityville looks great, uh, but I have, the, I have a great Amityville uh, 4K edition from Vinegar Syndrome. Um, but yes, your Crow 4K Steelbook will come uh, with Dolby Atmos for sure. And guys, I'm not going to be able to, I'm probably going to have to skip ahead a little bit. I'm probably only going to be live for about an hour and 15, hour and a half tonight. Um, so, you know, I, I won't be able to get to every question, but uh, I appreciate everybody's question. I'll try to get to as much as I can. Um, American History X Blu-ray Steelbook. Nice. I haven't seen the first element. I've heard it was really good, though. So I'm actually excited to watch it. I don't know if I'll make it to the theaters to see it, but uh, I'll definitely I'll definitely check it out. Um, what up, Ken Dog? I just bought a buddy of mine's 4K collection. He wanted out, so I bought over 200 4K titles from him. I'll keep what I need and sell trade the rest. Dang, how much did you spend on that, man? If you don't mind me asking, that's crazy. He just he just wanted out of the game, huh? He said I'm done, done with this crap. Ladies' man is a fun, funny flick. It is. I I feel like it holds up better than it has any right to. It's it's fun. Uh, yeah, we had the ketchup chips in the video and, uh, I was not a fan of the ketchup chips. I'll be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so they always promote the umbrella Blu-rays as region B anyway, but I get what people are saying that they specifically said this is region B in that update that they put out. And I'll be talking about this on the physical media report probably Monday, but, um, it is strange to point out where this is region B, like this one is region B. It almost makes me think that maybe their deal required them to do it region B because somebody in the States is doing another version. Um, so maybe that's why, but most of umbrella stuff is promoted as region B, but it will play um, on your regular Blu-ray or 4k player. So I don't know. I guess I'll have to find, I will be getting that. So I'll have to find out when I get it. Um, you know, they've already switched the cover on it like 18 times. So hopefully we'll get it sometime in 2024. Uh, thank you, Mules. Uh, the best. Yes, I am from Canada. Nice. I know I've got a lot of Canadians watching me, so I thought you all would appreciate that. Um, you all good. What's up, Floyd House Flicks? I used to do Tim's hair when uh, he had a sitcom some years ago. Really? Talk about another life. Ladies, man, is definitely my favorite. Are you kidding me, man? Damn, you got to tell me some Tim Meadows stories. He's he's legit like one of just my all-time favorites. I love him. I wish he had more movies to watch. Like, you know, I feel like it's just Ladies, Man, and he would just pop up in other films and stuff. But I feel like Ladies, Man was like his movie. I wish he had more movies. Uh, I want to. I know my wife really wants to see it, so I think we should. We will. Uh, I think it will. I just I don't know what's taking so long, but I think it will at some point. Um, I think it will too. I think Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Dust Till Dawn will get a 4K. Um, I think Mortal Kombat will get a 4K as well. I think they'll all get 4Ks at some point. I just don't know when. Uh, mispronouncing names you try, bro. I, I know, man, look, I, I'm sorry. Um, I know I could probably be more for, for, I can't even speak English sometimes, just regular English, regardless of the names. Um, as you can tell, but, uh, I should be more professional. Look up the names, how they're pronounced. I've done that before. The problem is 
is when I get on camera and I go to deliver that, it just doesn't come out sometimes. So I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, I've got a mental issue or so. <laughs> I don't know what you call it, but I, I try. I do try. I didn't know Canadians can get Aero chocolate. I thought us Brits only have them. I guess the Canadians get them too. I haven't really tried the Aero chocolate, uh, Adrian. Yeah, that's what I use, LaCrypta. I use the Power, Power Director, um, Cyberlink Pro or something. Um, where, we were, where we review 90s and 80s films and how much representation they have gotten. What would you say the top 90s and 80s film is? That's, I mean, that's a broad question. Um, my favorite film of the 90s, I mean, my favorite film of the 80s would be, as of right now, like as of the last time that I did my top movies of all time, it was Empire Strikes Back, which is 1980. Um, top movie of the 90s? Let me see. I don't even know if I have any 90s movies in my top uh, my top 10 movies of all time. That's weird. That's very weird. Um, oh, T2. T2 is in my top 10. So I would say Terminator 2 is my, um, my favorite movie of the 90s. But when I redo my list, and I will redo my top 50 movies of all time, there will be changes because I've seen so many more movies since I made that back in uh, 2019, I think. Uh, do you like spicy food? Yeah, I like spicy food, but I'll be honest, like as I get older, like it's something that I can't have all the time anymore because it does mess me up. What's some underrated movies of 2023 in your opinion? Cobwebs, definitely one of them. Um, Infinity Pool is definitely one of them. I love that movie. Um, and uh, there was a movie on HBO on Max and it was called like Reality. And I thought it was a really good movie. It had Sydney Sweeney in it. And I thought she was really great. And she was kind of playing a kind of plain version of herself. She was playing another character, but like she wasn't flaunting her jugs and stuff like that. Like she has in every other movie. So I felt like she was a little bit more down to earth. And I thought she gave a really good performance. It was a based on a real story. And I thought that was really good. But those are the movies that are coming to mind. Um, does your wife know you're watching Ladies Man? No. No, she doesn't. But I don't think she'd have a problem with Ladies Man. Uh, Looney Tunes back in action is out of print on Blu-ray. Oh, that sucks. I wish I had some out of print stuff. I uh, just bought a region free player. Do you have any region B releases you'd recommend? Um, trying to think. I mean, I got a lot of region B stuff. I mean, all of Umbrella is region B technically, so I could recommend something from them, but it plays on a regular player. So, um, that's tough. To be honest, like I haven't watched a ton of my region B stuff. I haven't watched a lot of it. Uh, get a um, get a Valley Girl from Eureka. That's a beautiful edition. That's a Region B release. I recommend that. Uh, biggest YouTube pet peeves, just like personally, just making videos. Um, I'm trying to think. Other than just like the normal stuff, I'm trying to think if there's any pet peeves. Um. I'll give you a pet peeve. I did a trailer reaction for Joker 2 last night on my wife and I's channel. And it's just ridiculous to me how that is copyrighted. Like it's a trailer and I'm talking over it, but they get copyrighted every time. It doesn't make any sense. Like we're promoting the movie and there's several YouTubers that have talked about this. But every time you play a video or a trailer, not every time, there's some studios that won't copyright you, but almost every time it gets copyrighted. Um, and I just don't get it because you're promoting the movie. It's not like you're playing the movie. You're playing the trailer. So there's a YouTube pet peeve. Um, I got my mean guns today. What's up, Ken and chat? Never seen it, but cool edition. They did a little poster, reversal art and such. Yeah, it's uh, it looked good. It looked good on Blu-ray. It's just a really wild, wacky movie. Uh, but there's three brand new special features on that um, that are pretty lengthy and you don't get that a lot on the MBD rewinds. Like you'll get some archival stuff, but with uh, mean guns, that was the first time it was put out on Blu-ray. So, uh, we got the happy optimist, formerly the infinite character. What is up, man? 
Um, the happy optimist has entered the stream. Kenny, uh, can I give you thoughts on seven psychopaths and Slumdog Millionaire 2008? Um, haven't seen seven psychopaths and I, I like Slumdog Millionaire. It's a good movie. Um, I rewatched that I think in 2018 or 2019 and, um, it didn't hold up quite like I remember. I don't know if it deserved best picture, but I did like the movie. I, I do like the movie. It's, uh, I used to watch who wants to be a millionaire all the time when I was a kid. So it was, uh, it was a cool idea and premise. Danny Boyle film vinegar syndrome collection. Uh, are you going to buy aliens expanded documentary? James Cameron is now on it. I wish Ripley could have been a part of it too. I, I didn't know about that, Jeff. I'll have to look into that, but uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be down for buying that. If you have a movie on Blu-ray, but also have the digital version in 4k HDR, which one do you choose to watch? Um, well, I, I mean, I don't have a lot of digital stuff on. I don't buy movies digitally in 4K. So I can't think of a scenario where I would have something in 4K digitally unless it was on a streaming service and I have the Blu-ray because I don't buy 4K um, on streaming. So, but uh, I, I guess I would choose the 4K on the streaming if, if I was in that situation because it's a better quality. Um. Let's see. Here's a movie collection question. What's like the most rarest piece of physical media you own? Like what movie did you find rare? I think the rarest thing that I have um, in my collection is um, the Columbia Classics Volume 1 set. I was looking the other day and that thing's going for like $1,800 on eBay right now. Uh, which is ridiculous. And I was really tempted to sell it. Uh, but I don't know if I could get anybody to buy it for $1,800. There was other people that were selling it for like 800 bucks. Um, but somebody had it listed. It was still sealed though. Mine's not sealed for $1,800. I feel like that's the rarest thing I have in my collection. I feel like I, that's the rarest thing I have in my collection. Um, did you watch? I haven't watched Train Spotting yet. I need to watch Train Spotting. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, Time Bandits is really good. Have it on 4K. Um, look, guys, I am honored. We have a celebrity um, in the chat right now. Michael Mohan. If that's the real Michael Mohan, this is the director of the movie Immaculate, which this is kind of blowing my mind right now. He he watches my channel. He, he loves the Blu-ray audits, which me and my wife don't do anymore. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but I hope you find some of my other content entertaining. Um, and he was talking about it on Jeff's channel films at home on his podcast. And I watched that and it just blew my mind. But anyway, hopefully this is the real Michael Mohan, but he says, Hey man, just wanted to thank you and the wife for going to see my film. That was really so cool of you to go and then spread the word. We tried, man, I'm, I'm going to be pumping that movie up. Cause I really, really enjoyed that movie. Really good film. So. Thank you so much for popping in, man. That 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 was super cool. Um, we got Kevin Kruger here. Are you a fan of the movie My Girl? I do like My Girl. I haven't seen My Girl in a while. Um, I got the double pack collection that Mill Creek put out, but uh, I need to rewatch both those movies because it, it came in the two pack with both of them. Uh, let's see. Carrie Bork says, "Good day, Ken. How's it going, mates? I went and saw the first Omen on Tuesday night, and the best horror film of 2024 so far. Four to five stars. Go and see it on the big screen." Um, look, man, I, I did not see that movie actually being good. So I'm happy that everybody's pretty much everybody's saying it's good. So I am excited, uh, to, to check that out at some point. And it'll probably be my favorite Omen film. Cause I'm honestly like, I like the first Omen, but it's not like a mind blowing horror film to me. I actually like the second Omen, the best of the ones that I've seen just cause it's a little wilder and wacky. But so far this year, 2024, I think the best horror film is immaculate. I'll just say that. I'll just say that. Are you a fan of Jack Ryan movies? Um, yeah, the Harrison Ford ones that I've seen. Um, you know, I like Clear and Present Danger and Patriot Games. I need to rewatch those because it's been a while. Um, but I haven't seen any of the new ones. Uh, thank you, Tony. What's up, Danny? How you doing, buddy? Uh, do you think black sheep is as good as Tommy boy? I do not. I do not. Main reason I do not is because I watched black sheep maybe twice and I've watched Tommy boy 
150 times minimum. So the fact that I never felt the need to revisit Black Sheep tells me that it's not as good. But you know what? I could go back and rewatch it now and think it's hilarious. And maybe it is great. Um, I, I need to do that. But as of right now, no, that's I, I can't I can't even fathom that. Tommy Boy is one of my favorite comedies of all time. Um, Umbrella Masters Universe, Region B Locked. Yeah, yeah. And the artwork changed again. I don't know what's going on. Why they got to keep changing the art? What are they doing? Um, somebody else has got to be working on another box set, right? And they're changing it because they don't want it to match the other one. And the damn lady, this is going to be a recurring theme for the rest of the night. Me turning back on the player. You know, my Chinatown DVD didn't do this. I left my Chinatown DVD on like all day and the screen stayed on. Um, we have Jorge here. Uh, Ken, what are you going to do when your movie collection gets to the point where you got no more space? It's nice to have options on what to watch, but you only got so much shelf space. Yeah, it's just, I'm kind of getting there now. I've got stuff all over the floor and I've got that little, sh I've got that shelf, but it's not little, but I've got the shelf behind me. That's it. So I already need another shelf. Um, but I do have that entire wall over there. I could use the wall in front of me if I have to. I got this wall over here that the TV's on. And I've got an entire uh, living area out there in the rest of the basement. So if I have to, I just tell the wife, look, I got to move some movies out here. And I'll move some movies out there as well. So, but uh, I I do want, there is some stuff I could get rid of for sure. So I, I could definitely get rid of some stuff to free up some space, some duplicates and things like that. Um, what's up, Miss Jess? How are you doing? Thank you so much for stopping by. I know Best Buy will regret their decisions by Christmas. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the Best Buy world. I, I, I haven't been there. I've got no reason to go. So it's almost like they're a non-factor. I don't even really think about them anymore. I know I made a lot of videos about them, but in the past couple of months, I haven't really thought about Best Buy that much. I love physical media. Uh, Beetlejuice is here. You guys better see my sequels. Hey, oh, lie, lie. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to go see the sequel. I, I thought the trailer was pretty good. The trailer kind of sold me a little bit. So I am going to see uh, the sequel. Yes, this is live, Tony. This is live. Uh, I love the current streaming era. For one reason, people are dumping their physical media collections. I'm scooping them up. I got 14 DVDs and three TV seasons at eight for 18 bucks. Scoop it all up while you can, man. Scoop it all up while you can. And I got the ladies man playing back there. Um, and you know what? When all the streaming services are like $50 a month and everybody wants to run back to their physical media, we've got it. We got it all, baby. Um, it's going to be like Fallout. Is anybody watching Fallout on Amazon Prime? I thought about watching the first episode tonight. Uh, didn't it drop tonight uh, before I go to bed? Because um, I was excited. I was excited to check that one out. But I got to watch the ladies man. I said I was, I'm committed to watching a ladies man. Then I got to finish mean guns. Maybe I'll watch an episode of fallout. Who knows? Um, Tony from basement blues has plenty of, of space for his collection. If Tony hasn't run out yet, then I'm not going to run out. He's, he's got like at least four times as much as I do. Uh, at least four times as much as I do. I'm probably, I'm not even, I don't even think I'm up to 4,000 yet. Um, I don't know. The last time I like really counted was maybe like 2021, 2022. Um, we got the ladies, man. Ooh, that's a lady. Um, <laughs> Billy D. Williams. Um, what? Come on now. There we go. Last time I counted was probably like 2021. And I think it was 2600 I counted. So I feel like since then. I've added at least, I had to have added at least 1,400. So maybe I am at uh, 4,000. What's up, Garrett? What's going on, Garrett? Everybody go check out uh, Garrett at Born to be Right. He did a really cool interview uh, with the people at Anchor Bay last night. Yes, Anchor Bay, people that did all the cool DVD releases back in the day. They're back. They're coming back. They're under new ownership, and they're putting out uh, a couple of titles pretty soon, I think. But it was a really good interview talking about them kind of rebooting Anchor Bay and bringing them back. and. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. The more the merrier in the in the boutique landscape. So I'll definitely try to support their first couple of releases for sure. Um, let's see. What makes a good Blu-ray 4K of the cover, the title, the transfer? I mean, all of the above is nice for sure. But what makes a good Blu-ray 4K, uh, Dingo Boy? I mean, the, the transfer would probably be the most important to what makes a good Blu-ray 4K. 
Um, now, when you're saying what makes a good movie, the title, the, I mean, the cover definitely factors in as well. I don't know. I mean, the most important thing to me is when I'm upgrading something, it has to look better than what I'm upgrading it from. And it has to be the definitive version of what the movie can look like on home video. So that's probably the most important thing is the transfer. Then it would probably be the movie. And then it would be the packaging. I mean, the, look, the movie's always first because you wouldn't even be getting it if it wasn't for the movie. Um, but if you're saying what what makes a good Blu-ray 4K, I'd say the transfer and then the packaging. But I don't know, guys. I've I've collected packaging too for shitty transfers like Terminator 2. So I don't know. It just it just depends. It really just depends. Disney sucks. That's all. I I I agree. I agree. We'll we'll see what happens with Sony. I, I'm still not like that optimistic, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see, Adrian. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to start burning through a little bit. I apologize. Oh, the House of Doom set sold out, huh? Oh, I saw that they were showing that CM Punk footage. I didn't get a chance to, to jump into that, but uh, that's funny. Um, nice, nice. What's up, Ruben? <laughs> What's up, Ruben? Uh, Pot says, just picked up Oppenheimer, Jurassic Park, Ma Magnificent 7 on 4K, 3 for... Nice, nice. Yeah, take advantage of that 3 for 2 deal on Amazon and um, on Target is doing the same deal as well. What's going on, dude who loves movies? How you doing, buddy? Uh, don't forget to roundhouse kick that like button for Kenny, uh, Kenny Knoxville. Thank you, man. Yeah, welcome to Mid-Level Media. Let's go. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yes, I've been wondering about 4K D-Ray. Maybe he's taking a break. Yeah, just a break, man. Sometimes you need that. And D-Ray's been doing this for a very long time, too. Um, what's the best 4K of the decade so far? Of the decade? Shit. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's been so many good ones. Like, they really... 4K really started hitting its stride in 2020. So, like, all the great ones are in the 2020s, I feel like. I mean, yeah, there's some good ones before, but... Um, that that'd be tough. That's that's a video idea though. Like I could do. I always do like top ten of the year. I could do like top ten of the twenty twenty so far. Um, I mean, I think the Warriors is a landmark four K. I think Roadhouse is a landmark four K. When you're talking like what really pushes what the format could do with like classic film restorations, Jaws is up there. Um, uh, Django from Arrow Video is up there. Django four K. Um, those are some of the best to me. Freeway from Vinegar Syndrome, I think is a great release. Um, yeah, there's a lot of great ones though. A lot of great ones. I mean, Hitcher is going to be announced any year now. <laughs> I don't know what year, but it'll be announced at some point. Uh, I mean, I've got a, a umbrella edition in here that I haven't even unboxed yet, but I'll get to it. Uh, oh my, God. don't say that. Don't say that Ferdinand. Don't say that. It, it will get one because they already said it was, they said that that's going to be the first Blu-ray and possibly 4k that's put out under the Sony Disney partnership. So they already said it was getting one, um, when they did the, the merging of Sony and Disney. Uh, what is your favorite sound while watching a movie for me? Anything that goes from one side of the screen to the other, um, favorite sounds. I like rain. I like rain. Rain really immerses me sometimes, you know, and it's relaxing as well. Uh, Frailty for the first time last night. Damn, that's a great movie. Uh, pretty disturbing, great performances in that film. I would love for that to get a 4K, some kind of a box set treatment. Like, that is a super underrated movie. I love that movie. Directed by Bill Paxton. Um, I didn't see that, Charlie. I didn't see that one. Um, I need to check that one out. I need to check it out. Uh, I know IFC Midnight put it out, so it should be coming out. Um, I don't know who will put that. That could be a partner label for vinegar syndrome. Cause they do IFC. Like that would be cool if they did a nice uh, slipped version for, um, as a partner label from IFC, but it'll probably come out. Um, I'm trying to think what IFC comes out as who puts that out. I can't remember. I know uh, screen factories put that out before. True tests of self-control. Yeah. Uh, practical effects or CGI. Uh, practical effects all day, Adrian. All day. What's up, Sean? Potty, hotty. 
Uh, do you think you'd collect anything else if you weren't collecting movies? Um, I probably video games. I used to be really into video games. I actually got a pretty decent sized video game collection from like the 360 PS3 Wii era because that's when I was gaming a lot in my early 20s. And I could see myself diving back into like the retro gaming and trying to collect all that stuff, but I can't do that in movies at the same time. That's for sure, guys. And we got two we got two oh two people here in the chat right now. Two hundred and two people. If you haven't hit the like button, please hit that like button for me. I would definitely appreciate it. Um, and let's see, what's up, Jasper? Just finished watching Hollow Man Steelbook. Recommend. I'm one step closer to owning all the Verhoeven films. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, nice, nice. How do you watch your collection? Do you want it using... Um, how do you watch your collection? Do you want it using a TV or a projector? Would you ever use or have you ever used a projector? If you did, did you enjoy this? I've never used a projector. My dad had a projector at our house, but it wasn't like anything they got now. Um... I remember he would like project uh, TV on it, but it wasn't as good quality. So I'm not saying I've got a bad experience with projectors, but I just don't remember like enjoying my experience watching a movie on a projector from back in the day. I'm sure they're a lot better now, though, and I see a lot of people watching them. Um, but yeah, I can't really speak on that too much. TMNT is the best 90s movie, uh, is best 90s movie of all time. I mean, yeah, I'm, I could see how you could get there. I like TMNT. Um, there's a lot of great nineties movies though. There's a lot of great nineties. movies. You got Shawshank Redemption, the green mile. Um, yeah, I mean, we did a, a top 25 nineties movies. I can't remember. What did I put at number one? I don't think I put Terminator two at number one. I think I put something else. I can't freaking remember. Unforgiven's great. Unforgiven's freaking awesome. Um, I dig it to super chats. Oh my goodness. We got planet C H. H in here. Christian, thank you so much. Don't F with the final boss. Bloodline will rise again. Um, dude, the rock is just on fire. Like he got me back into wrestling. I'm not back in hardcore. I'm not watching raw and stuff. I'm watching some clips on YouTube, but I watched WrestleMania over the weekend. I watched both nights in their entirety and I had a great time and wrestling is, is back and I'm happy that it's back. And I'm probably going to be watching more of it from now on for sure. I used to be the biggest wrestling fan. That's all I watched was wrestling back in the, I'd say from, I don't know, 97 to night to 2015. I watched wrestling like nonstop, like everything. I had to watch every single show. Um, and then I got out of it because I just got pissed off. They were just doing the same crap over and over again. They weren't pushing people that they should. And I just got frustrated and I quit watching. Um, but now I'm back in and the rock I just think is doing some of his best work. And he, he was just phenomenal in that whole, whole build up to WrestleMania. So thank you so much, Christian. I appreciate the super chat. Um, let's see. And for that super chat, Christian, I'm going to give you a little clip. I'm going to give you good old Al. She got a great ass and you got your head all the way up it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and also Christian, I know it was your birthday recently and Garrett's birthday as well. Let me wish y'all a happy birthday. Both of y'all happy birthday. There's a lot of birthdays going on right now. Huck, Christian, Garrett. I'm trying to see where I'm at. Uh, Ken, you know anything about the driver 4k Walter Hill movie? Is it playable in American players that, that came out? Um, so most 4ks are playable or are region free. They can play in any 4k player. It's very rare that you'll get one that's locked. Um, so I want to say, yes, that will be region fleet free and you can play it in your player. Um, but I never, you never know for sure, but I don't think I heard anything about that one. So you're safe with that one for sure. But that was an imprint title, wasn't it? I love, I love liar liar. That's one of my favorites of all time. That's a top five comedy for me, for sure. Uh, that Joker trailer is excellent. I watched at least 10 times already. It's excellent. If you, uh, uh, have a surround sound setup. Yeah, I I thought it was great. I, I really did. I cannot wait for it. Just visually, it looks great. I I was excited for that when they first announced it. It was going to be a musical, Lady Gaga. I was like, that sounds so weird, but it sounds like it would work with the Joker. Make it really dark, 
And I think I think that movie is going to surprise a lot of people. I think it's going to be awesome. Um, and I can't wait. How's it going, Ken? I just popped in for a few minutes. We'll watch this entirely tomorrow. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Now that's rad. Uh, how often do you get uh, physical with your media? <laughs> uh, here recently, a lot. Because I've been moving stuff all over the room. Uh, so it's been pretty physical around here. Uh, oh, just like the first Omen as well. Nice. Well, look, guys, you like the first Omen. Everybody's talking about the first Omen. I got the freaking director right here of Immaculate, which is also in theaters. Go see it. Go support it. He's here. The director of the first Omen is not in my chat tonight. So I can't, in good conscience, promote the first Omen. But I can promote Immaculate because I saw it and I really enjoyed it. And I think you should go see it. Um, and he's he's here. That's the director. A film director, somebody that directed a movie. He's in Hollywood. He's worked with Sidney Sweeney. You know, he directed a movie. He's in my chats. That's crazy. But thank you for being here, Michael. Uh, sorry, this is in response to you saying Immaculate is the best horror 2024. Look, it it probably will stay that. And I'll admit it when the year's out. I'm completely biased. All right. But Immaculate's the best of the year. No, dude, I, I really enjoyed it a lot. But one of my favorite horror movies of all time is Rosemary's Baby. And it gave me those vibes all throughout. So that's, I was kind of prone to enjoy that movie. Um, do Saw 10 Film Collection. <laughs> Why do you want me to do a walk through the collection? Oh my goodness. Uh, we get an awesome 4K physical release steel book, perhaps. I, I, I think that Michael would love to get all the 4Ks and all the steel books and all the second sight 4K editions. Uh, but I don't think that's that's up to to Michael. It could be, but Mike Michael, push it, push it, get it out there, get it in people's ears. You're a physical guy. Um, and Michael also did a a walk through the Severn closet recently, which I watched, um, which was really cool. Go check. It's kind of like the Criterion Closet stuff that they do, but go check out the Severn Films channel. And there's a video with him doing a walk through of the. Um, of the Severn closet, which I, I just think is super cool. Like he's, he's a Hollywood filmmaker and he's into physical media. Like we are like not just buying regular Blu-rays and, and DVDs and 4Ks off the shelf at Walmart, but he's like deep into the boutique stuff, which I think is awesome. Uh, let's see. What's up. Everyone says Cheryl, what's going on, Cheryl. It's a lady. It's a lady in the chat. Uh, hoping for a 4k, but Oh, okay. He's dropping some insider knowledge. Let's, let's see what's going on. Hoping for a 4K, but I did record a commentary for the blue um, out of my hotel room at uh, South by Southwest before the film premiered. Nice, nice, nice. Um, see, he took the time to do a commentary because he knows we appreciate that. Hell of a guy. Go see the Immaculate. Uh, nice looking forward to that, Michael Moan. Uh, does anyone know where I can find the pre-order for Dune 2 Steelbook? That's it's. It's on Amazon, but it should be on Groove as well, Cheryl. should be on Groove if you want to go ahead and get it off Groove. It might be cheaper on there as well. Uh, how the gut's feeling. <laughs> Better now. For some reason in that video, like I was all messed up. Uh, but thank you so much for all the Canadian stuff. Did you see I was drinking the, the Tim Hortons coffee, Jesse? I am uh, drinking the Tim Hortons coffee. Pate hotte. <laughs> Somebody keeps asking for the uh, Saul 10 movie collection and somebody keeps saying potty hottie. This chat is wild tonight. And we got a film director in here. Uh, man, I haven't been to Best Buy in forever. I do really miss it, but I got to say Walmart has put out some six. Double they have. They've been doing good. They've been doing good. Uh, my only thing left with Best Buy is video games and toys. Pretty soon Best Buy will probably go out of business. Yeah. You get toys there. Uh, let's see. Do you ever consider showing the last scene? Yeah, I'm not going to say anything to that because I don't want to spoil it. But uh, let's see. Michael Keaton says Beetlejuice is really good. They waited for a good script before shooting. Um, I hope it is. I really do. I, I hope it is. I really hope it is. Uh, Groove is sold out. It says out of stock. Damn. I mean, they, it's been up for pre-order for a while, Cheryl. 
And uh, I did promote it on the physical media report as soon as it went up. So it, it might have just sold out, but I'm sure it'll be back in stock. I'm, I'm sure it's not going to go out of stock. I'm sure it'll come back. All ladies do it. I haven't checked that one out yet, uh, but that would be a great double feature to do the uh, to watch all ladies do it and then watch the ladies man. Maybe I'll do a double feature video of those two. That could be possible. Uh are they really? Are they selling it? They can't be selling out of that stuff. Can't be. Oh, you're welcome, ma'am. Yeah, I thought that was a great interview. I loved it. Uh, video, game, game, video Game Drome just finished watching the first episode of Fallout. Great stuff. It's an hour and 15 minutes long, though. Yeah, I've been hearing it's really good. I, I love the games. I really did. So, um, All right. Look, Sean, I'm going to put you all on timeouts. Not that I really care that you're saying party hardy and do a salt in film collection, but you're just mucking up the chat uh, and making it tougher to get through. So there we go. Maybe that'll make things a little bit easier. Uh, I, you got to have over four days. You've been getting more movies than me since I found your channel. I'm over 4,100 in my collection says Mike. Yeah, I, I probably am. I probably am. Well, I mean, if I can fill five shelves and they they all hold six fifty, what's that? Um, what is that? And I probably have a little bit more than that. I can do math, right? Thirty two fifty. Maybe I got like fifty or hundred more that won't fit on shelves. So thirty three fifty, and then I got an entire crate of Dollar Tree Blu rays and DVDs in there. That's probably like maybe a hundred. So. And then all my DVDs. I don't know. I don't know if I'm quite to 4,000 based on that. Um, but I'm close. I, I'd probably be like 37, 38 or something. Um, still waiting on the abyss from Amazon. Really? That sucks, man. I I'm, was very fortunate to get mine because I didn't think I was going to get it till May. Then all of a sudden it just shows up at the house. So um, Special features are a priority for me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Ordered 70s King Kong, baby, or today. <laughs> Why did I say baby? Um, the only reason I didn't get that is because it's a Paramount Steelbook. Usually they're pretty good about keeping those in stock. So I feel like I can get that a little later. Um, not that it was a bad price, but maybe it'll go down in price a little bit. Um, and plus, I do have I do have the damn Shout Factor release that I haven't even watched. It's like, maybe I should watch that first. Um, and then get the 4k, but I'm sure it looks amazing on 4k. Um, I got two new spaghettis from Kino last week, fistful of dynamite. I want that one fistful of dynamite and death rides a horse. I need to get those, uh, Gary, hopefully in the next sale, they'll be available. Um, all right. We do have another super chat from Mohawk Vader, $10 super chat. Do you think crow steelbooks will get restocked? Been sold out. Long time. I'm also wishing for the last of the Mohicans, Dances with Wolves, and 1492 on 4K. Also, what's your top six slip covers you're missing? There's a lot in there. There's a lot in there, Mohawk Vader. Um, so do I think the Crow Steelbooks will get restocked? Like I just said with the King Kong Steelbook, it's Paramount. So I feel like Paramount will have them back in stock. I so they're sold out. Are you all serious right now? The Crow 4K Steelbook sold out. Um, I mean, I, I figured maybe the Walmart one sold out, but is the Amazon one sold out? Like they usually keep that stuff pretty available. Um, so that's the Crow Steelbook. That's the one that's on Amazon. I... There's weird stuff happening with all this stuff, guys. Ever since, you know, we lost Best Buy. I don't want to keep beating that horse, but I just feel like there's weird stuff going on with the Amazon pre-ordering. They're not marking stuff down. They're, um, you know, stuff showing up, not not showing up to be to go for pre-order. And I don't know, it's just there's a lot of weird things going on. I feel like this will come back. Let me bring, I, yeah, I feel like this will come back like maybe two weeks before it comes out. So just keep your eye on it. Um, I mean, I could be wrong, 
But uh, as for the Walmart one, maybe that's sold out. But also like with Walmart, the the same thing was going on. The same thing was going on earlier this year. My freaking movie shut off again. Damn it. The same thing was going on this year with uh, the, the Silent Night Steelbook. Um, it was showing sold out. And then like a couple days before it was supposed to come out, it goes back up on the Walmart site. So with this being Paramount and them knowing how in demand the Crow probably is, I really don't see that selling out. I, I think it'll come back in stock. Um, I think it'll come back in stock at some points uh, right before the release date. But uh, that's that's just me speculating. Uh, Last of the Mohicans. Yeah, I th that's Disney. Dance with Wolves, I think, is Disney. I don't know what 1492 is. Um, top six slip covers you're missing. That's just, Those are always tough and tough for me to answer. Um, I really want the slip cover for Creep Show 2 or the box set that it was in. That was a really nice release. I did not pre-order that. That was actually my first ever Arrow video release. I didn't even know what Arrow video was, but I knew I, lo I loved Creep Show 2. So I looked it up on Amazon to buy it, and that was my first Arrow release. Um, and then I found out it had a nice box set and I was like, damn it, that's nice. And I want it. Um, so that would be one. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any like Blu-ray slip covers I want. There's a lot of screen factories I have that I would like to have the slip covers for on the, um, on the Blu-ray releases, you know, sleep away camp, those three movies. I would love to have the slip covers for, I don't even have two and three. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. I'm, I'm not as focused on slips as I used to be, I feel like. And to be honest, I've never been like super um, obsessive about them. I like to get them. I do like to get them. Uh, which if you want to check out a good uh, slip cover video of us just nerding out about slip covers, getting real nerdy about it, check, it, check out uh, Planet CHH's channel. He did a, we did a good conversation about slipcovers on there a few weeks ago. Um, so definitely go check that out. It was about two or three weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago, somewhere around there. Um, but it was me, Christian and Garrett had a good conversation about slipcovers. Um, but yeah, that, it's, it's a tough one for me to answer, man. There's, oh, I got one for you. Class of 99. It's the only Vestron video, um, Blu-ray that I have in my collection that I don't have a slipcover for the only one. Um, so that one I definitely need because it's a part of the collection. Um, but yeah, man, I'm trying to answer the question because you paid me $10. Uh, so, and look, it didn't, can I answer one that didn't come with the slipcover? Um, VHS 99 pisses me off that it doesn't have a slipcover because 85 and 94 does. So I want a slipcover for that. But I also don't have a, a slipcover for my VHS one, and maybe that had a slipcover, so I could count that as well. Okay, that's enough of the slipcover talk. There's 214 people in here. You haven't hit the like button. Hit the like button. I don't know if we're going to be getting out of here at 11:30 or not. I may go till midnight because I haven't even covered the topic that I wanted to cover yet. Um, but we did get another super chat from Paul Allen uh, Brunotto. I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry, man. Uh, but we got a $5 super chat. Uh, and he says, you aware of filmmaker and YouTuber Robert Meyer Burnett and one of his programs is Let's Get Physical Media on Sundays. Have you seen it? Yes, I, I'm very aware of Robert Meyer Burnett. I try to catch the physical media. That usually comes on like when I'm at lunch at work on Sundays. So sometimes I'll pop in and, and catch like 20 minutes of it or something. Um and then sometimes I'll watch the replay every now and then. I haven't watched in a few weeks now, though. Um, but yeah, Robert has great insight on the industry. He's a huge physical media uh, fan, and he advocates for it all the time. He's on John Campia's YouTube channel all the time. And I love when John Campia does a physical media story because he's so like ignorant to physical media. And Rob always chimes in and, and corrects him on a lot of stuff, which is pretty funny but he's always the voice of reason when it comes to physical media on that show and i'm 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 a big fan of him i think he's he's awesome so yes i'm, I'm very aware of uh, robert meyer burnett for sure all right where was i at i'm talking a mile a minute guys let me let me drink some water is best Buy still selling movies 
Mike says he's been going to the Best Buy website to get their movie stock as they've sold it. Uh, same as Disney Movie Club. Really? Really? Uh, what do you think of Cape Light's upcoming release of Roadhouse 4K with a new transfer with Adobe Vision? Um, I didn't even know they were doing that, Trek or not. I'll be honest. I didn't even see that. Um, but I have the best uh, version of, of Roadhouse that uh, that I could ever hope for. So I... I I'll never upgrade that. That that's that's the best. I don't need anything else. That's it. That is it. Oh, yeah. Paul, look. Let me bring that up. Since you brought that up, I did want to talk about that tonight. Let's let's dive into that real quick. There is a 2 for 24 deal on Groove right now. Um so let's dive into that real quick. And I'll bring this up on the screen. For you guys, Groove's a great place, guys. Great place, great alternative. You know, if you don't want to shop at Amazon and Walmart, it's a great place to shop for. They they sell prim primarily Warner Brothers and Universal titles. Um, oh my goodness, I'm seeing right here they got the Flintstones on Blu-ray for $5.99. Are you kidding me? I need to get that. <laughs> I'll get on here and I'll find these Blu-rays that I never see anywhere else. And I'm like, I need that. <laughs> I need the Flintstones. I don't have that. Um, Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. I actually paid $23 for that when it came out because <laughs> my daughter wanted it. Um, and it's eight bucks right now. That's things that does thing, but they got stuff like Harry and the Hendersons guys. They got all eight of the Beethoven movies, the complete collection for nine bucks. If you want all the Beethoven movies, yeah, it's DVD, but like, that's a good deal. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm on the Blu-rays right now because this is the they're always running these these sales. This is Fab Family Favorites, magical movies and TV for the whole family. We'll get to the 4Ks here in a second. I kind of just fell onto the Blu-rays when I saw the the Flintstones. But this is kind of a mix of of a DVD and Blu-ray, and we got El Dorado, Peter Pan, um, Spicable Me Three, Casper's in here for seven bucks. Trolls World World Tours is six, seven bucks. Um, Problem Childs, the franchise, you got six bucks. You can get get both of those. Um, yeah, just some good stuff. You got some Barney on here, guys. Any any Barney fans out there? American Tale, like I could use that in the collection for sure. The Little Rascals, I need that one. Like, there's a lot of really good family favorites on here like this is a cool sale for sure you want the cat in the hat on blu-ray for six bucks um yeah i love groove i think they have a great great website um you just find a lot of stuff on here that you don't really see in a lot of a lot of other places so i think it's a cool place to go you got beethoven the first one standalone blu-ray definitely need to get that i love beethoven too as well though i'm a big beethoven fan the first two. I didn't know I didn't know they made eight movies. Jeez. Yeah, there's some good stuff on here. There's a lot of generic, you know, newer titles, but uh some good stuff over here overall. Kind of go through these last few pages really quick and then we'll get to the 4Ks, guys. Thank y'all for watching me tonight, though. I appreciate it. I appreciate your support. The mid-level media channel tonight for this live stream and uh yeah i got shrek forever after that's supposed to be getting a 4k soon though so tread lightly yogi bear is that the live action yogi bear movie the little vampires on here wasn't that like a disney original or something um okay let's jump into the Two for 24 deals. Uh, so you can get two 4Ks for 24 bucks. This is all that's included. It has their regular prices below them. So don't pay attention to that when you get on here. But you, yeah, you can get two 4Ks for 24 bucks. And there's some good stuff on here, like Eight Miles on here, Holiday Inn, Last Night in Soho, Point Break. Oh, that's the remake. So not great stuff. Uh, <laughs> the Town, To Kill a Mockingbird. That might be the, like, the pack, the box set release right there. Um, Psycho, The Grinch uh, remake or the, the cartoon remake. 
uh, Hobbs and Shaw. It came, it came from outer space. Guys, that is one of the most underrated 4Ks of last year. It looked amazing on 4K. Um, it also includes the 3D version if you're a 3D enthusiast. So I highly recommend it came from outer space. Uh, the Nun on 4K. Let's see. Dunkirk on 4K. There's some good stuff here, guys. Halloween 2018, Carlito's Way, um, which is a great 4K. I've got the Arrow version, but I also got the Universal version. Uh, Kong Skull Island, The It Chapter 2, Glorious Bastards, Smoking Aces, V for Vendetta, uh, Animal House, Smoking the Bandits, like, yeah, Monty Python. Like, you got good stuff on here. Like, they... They include a good selection. They don't just put crap in this sale. Two for 24. Two guns. I mean, some of this stuff is fairly new, fairly recent. Jaws 2 is on here, guys. Like that, that came out last year. So, yeah, if you want some good deals, like I don't think I've seen Jaws 2 for 12 bucks on Amazon since it came out. So, you could pair that. You could stock up on your Hitchcocks. Like, if you just wanted one of the Hitchcock movies, if you didn't want the others. You could get one of those. Um, Scarface, I think, is a great 4K. So if you want to pair like Jaws 2 with Scarface, like you can't really go wrong. But there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, Batman Year One, I think that one came out last year. Or was it the year before? I can't, I can't quite remember. In the Heights, Kick-Ass 2. That came out last year, Kick-Ass 2. And, uh, yeah, these are the more recent uh, Hitchcock ones. Topaz, Torn Curtain, Bride of Frankenstein, if you want some of the Universal Monster movies. Yeah, just some good stuff on Groove. I, I highly recommend uh, Groove.com for sure. But thank you for bringing that up, uh, Mike. Was it Mike? Who brought that up? I can't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, he's back. He's back again. Make on demand disc going to St. Louis. Uh, anyone own Contagion 4K? Just went to buy it from Amazon. It's $38. Yeah, it was a manufacturer on demand. I didn't get that one. I didn't get it. I was supposed to get it from Warner Brothers, but they never sent it and I never followed up. So um, I've never seen that movie. But did it need a 4K? We got, oh my goodness, I missed uh, I missed a couple super chats. Thank you all so much. Eric E with 499. Thank you, uh, Eric E. Heat is one of the best movies. You're 100% right, man. That's, I could see like anybody putting that up in like top five. Like that's, that movie is amazing. So that's a great pick. There's so many great picks. So many great picks that you can put up there. Uh, but thank you so much, Eric E. Let, let me play some of my clips. I've got, since you, since you brought up Heat's. I've got a clip. I've got the perfect clip. I've already played it tonight, but I got the perfect clip. She got a great ass. And you got your head all the way up it. She's got a great ass. That is such a such a great line from that movie. I love it so much. Al Pacino is just on another level in heat. Ha! Whoa! Come on, motherfucker. Ha! So good. Uh, we got Paul Allens for the another super chat. Thank you, Paul. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm good friends with Marshall, Marsha. Is, is that supposed to be Marshall, Marshall arts, Marshall arts action star, Cynthia Rothrock and arranged the interview for Rob and co-host Dieter Bastian LGPM show on February. I remember that show, man. That's awesome that you arranged that for them. That that's very cool. Um, but yeah, that, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah, I do remember that show. I remember that show. Thank you. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat though, Paul. I really appreciate that. I would say, Hey, can you help me out so I can get her on the show? But I, I feel like I would be ill-equipped to interview Cynthia Rothrock being as so I haven't seen any of her movies. So I need to watch some of her movies and then maybe I can get with you on an interview, but, uh, very awesome though. I, yeah, that, that was, that was cool. That was cool. Let's see. But thank you so much, Paul. Let me let me give you a super chat or not a super, but a super clip. OK. And Paul, I'm going to give you my. Most prestigious super clip. What are you waiting for? Huh? What are you waiting for? 
What are you waiting for? I feel like Jay Love could have been a Cynthia Rothrock. I feel like she could have done the martial arts stuff in the 90s. You know, she really applied herself. I feel like she could have got there for sure. Um, but let's let's get back to the chat real quick. I'm way behind. God, I'm way behind. What is going on? Yeah, no, dude, dude, you're preaching to the choir. Like it, I talked about that in Kill Bill because the Lionsgate deal, um, Lionsgate acquired Kill Bill, the both Kill Bill movies, Jackie Brown, I think also Hateful Eight too, am I right? Um, and Django. So I, I, I think they're probably waiting on Quentin at this point uh, to do the upgrades. But yeah, hopefully we'll see those on 4K this year. Like I... And nice steel books too, because it's Lionsgate. Like, do the do the steel books, do all the stuff. Like, that would be incredible. Can you imagine two Kill Bill like steel books with slip covers on 4K, like they did with Reservoir Dogs, um, Pulp Fiction? Like, we need that. We need uh, the Hateful Eight nice steel book slip cover, Django steel book slip cover with Calvin Candy on it. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, Jackie Brown as well. Like, that could be an amazing steel book. I I love Jackie Brown. I could Jackie Brown to me. I feel like out of all of them has the potential to look like the best. I feel like Jackie Brown would look amazing um, in 4K. Interesting that you said that, Kevin. I do have plans. I don't know if it's going to... I do have plans. We'll just say that. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, do you have any advice for someone who can't watch movies that require subtitles? The only exception is Passion of the Christ, but it's difficult. I want to watch Seven Samurai. Um I mean, what's the reason that you can't um, watch movies that require subtitles? Is it just hard for you to go back and forth? But you say an exception is the Passion of the Christ. But um, I mean, to be honest, unless it's dubbed, like you really don't have a lot of options, or at least I don't know of any options. I mean, there's a lot of Italian, like if you watch a lot of the Italian horror films, like a lot of those are dubbed, so you can watch those. Um, but I don't know if Seven Samurai is. I don't know if that is, but maybe there's a version of that online. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Kevin Kruger says, what's or the most underrated 90s comedy? Um, Jeez. Jeez. I'm trying to think of a good answer. Most underrated 90s comedy. God, I can't think of one. I can think of great comedies, but I can't think of like the most underrated. Um, I'll have to take like a comedy that's from one of the bigger stars. I'll say The Mask. I'll say The Mask with Jim Carrey. I feel like some people sleep on that one. I don't feel like it gets the love it deserves. You know, everybody talks about Dumb and Dumber. Um, I talk about Liar Liar a lot because I love that movie. Um, a lot of people champion uh, the cable guy. You know, of course, Ace Ventura gets love. But I feel like The Mask gets left out. And I would love for that to get a 4K and some kind of like box set treatment. What's up, Fuzz, man? How are you doing, buddy? Uh, what's up, Ken? How are you doing, man? Hope you're doing well, Fuzzy. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Uh, Mr. Milo says, glad you uh, like the rock I work for, his tequila brand tram. And we got all kinds of people involved with celebrities. We got celebrities. Like, it's it's crazy in here. Crazy tonight. Um, I'm a Canadian that lives in Buffalo, New York now. I just watched your Mary with Media video with you and Michelle eating Canadian stacks. Kind of fun to see KY folks enjoying my faves. Coffee crisp and all dressed um, are my favorite. Awesome, man. That That's really cool. Yeah, that's why we like doing those kind of videos. Um, it just kind of switches things up, changes the pace a little bit. And they're fun to do. Uh, Solo is a new leader. Jacob Fatu will be the new member. Rock versus Roman on SummerSlam after Dwayne's hiatus. Yeah, I, I definitely see that happening for sure. Definitely. I did get another super chat. I forgot to bring that up. But uh, Mohawk Vader says... My pre-order for the faculty on Amazon's still showing as a rival date of April 16th. Wondering if that's true. I don't know, man. 
I really don't. Um, it's so weird. It's, I just don't get it. Like it's not even on the screen factory website, you know? So I don't, I can't imagine that it's still going to maintain that release date. I'm going to look it up on Amazon there real quick just to see if the, cause the release date got taken off of blu-ray.com. I don't know what the hell happened to the faculty. I really don't. I can't even find it. So you're saying you pre-ordered it off of Amazon, right? And then they took it off of Amazon, but your pre-order is still active. That's just weird. Um, let me know if you get it. Like if you're on Instagram or Twitter, like message me and show it to me. Um, if you get it or, or let me know in the chat or in the comment section or something like I, I have to know what happens with that because that would be very, very odd, very odd. But thank you, Mohawk. Let me give you a little clip. Let, let me give you a little gem. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Hmm. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. The only game I played to finish lately was Spider-Man 2. Um, yeah, I played the first one to completion. You're welcome, man. I appreciate it. Christian says, while the love for Kino Lorber, they seem to rarely commission new special features and their packaging is always so basic and boring. Do they do anything better than other boutique labels? Pricing. I think pricing is the main reason to praise Kino and I think it's okay to not have very elaborate packaging and a ton of new special features, as long as your pricing reflects that. And they're releasing new 4Ks for 25, 26 bucks, and they're really good quality 4Ks. And it's not that they don't add in features, they will port over like existing archival stuff. So that's definitely nice. And I think it's something that they are working to ramp up in the future because the Crybaby release and some of the other releases I've noticed that are coming out, they're stacked. So I think like going forward, I feel like Kino is going to start adding a lot more new special features. Um, but I mean, it's mostly like the pricing. They have great sales. And I, I like the look of Kino's on the shelf. Yes, they're basic, but they're they're all just so uniform together on the shelf and they all just look good together. And their movie selection, like they've got great movies and it's got all kinds of different diverse movies, horror movies, classic movies. Western movies, comedies, just all kinds of movies in the Kino catalog that you don't see everywhere else. Um, just a variety of um, of different type of uh, different type of, of physical media genres and stuff like that. So, whereas some labels they focus primarily on horror, some labels focus primarily on you know foreign films and classics like Criterion Collection and, and Radiance. And I think Kino is just a nice mix of everything. And I think they have generally really good transfers. They're just quality and they do have special features. It's just most of the time they're not new. And I just like them. I just, I don't know. I just can't help it. I can't help but, lo but love Kino. But I, I if you don't like them, I, I get it, I guess. But I, I recommend you dive into them a little bit more. Uh, I can't stand the new Joker because it doesn't seem like the Joker that will eventually face off against Batman. And that's the Joker I want to see. No, I mean, it's a different universe, uh, Cheryl. It's not, um, you know, you got to think of it. I don't think that that Joker will ever fight Batman. You know, that's it's not in the same universe. It would be cool if they crossed him over and he fought Robert Pattinson, but they already got their Joker. It's uh, uh, Barry Keoghan is the is the Joker in the Batman universe. Sidney Sweeney. Look, I, I hear a lot of people giving her crap. I, I think she's actually a good actor. I think she's pretty good in most stuff I've seen her in, but I haven't really seen her bad stuff. Like, I haven't seen Madam Web. Um, and I haven't seen uh, anything but you or anyone but you or whatever. But she was excellent on Euphoria. I watched both of those seasons. And um, that reality movie I was talking about, she was really good in. The movie The Voyeurs, which Michael Mohan also directed. It's on Amazon Prime right now. And it doesn't have a physical release and it needs one. And we need to work on getting that a physical uh, release, Michael. Um, that, I thought that was a really good movie. I thought she was great in that. That was a, that was a really cool like throwback to like an old school, like 80s, 90s thriller. Uh, had that erotic tone. 
and it also had that like film noir tone and then it had that Hitchcockian feel to it with the rear window influence. So if you haven't seen the voyeurs, I, I recommend watching that on Amazon prime. Um, but yeah, I think she's a good actress. I don't know what people complain about. Uh, anyone else notice arrow video has terrible customer service stuff and got my refund from their system canceling my orders. Really? Really? Um, yeah, I just, I don't order from arrow a lot. Like I did recently for the sale, but I, I just don't order from arrow too often. I, I usually get stuff from diabolic or I, well, I mean, I get a lot of their stuff in through, um, uh, through my uh, partnership with them. So there's that as well. Um, dude, I, I think, yeah, I think you would like it, man. I think you'd dig it. I really do. I couldn't watch the Joker either. It bored me to death and I shut it off after a half hour. I don't know. I, I really liked it. If, if you like Scorsese, it was definitely a play on like uh, King of Comedy, Taxi Driver. So, but I mean, I, yeah, it's a little slow moving, but slow is not always bad. Uh, what's up, Blu-ray Addict? But he's not the real Joker. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what it is, though. Like, I was almost thinking that that's what they were going to come out and say is he's not really the Joker, like, but his character or him himself, like, at the end of the movie, he's like in front of everybody. So I was thinking they were going to do something like his character and what he was trying to embody and show the world is what inspired the actual Joker. Because I don't buy the joke, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker being able to go toe to toe with Batman, but I can buy him inspiring that joker so that's kind of what i thought that that was definitely a different joker but you know you're getting new um when you get a new interpretation of a character you don't want it to be the same thing do you want him to be exactly like heath ledger or jack nicholson like no you want him to do his own thing maybe that's not for you but i i like that it was different so uh, why don't do an interview chart with the director in the near future, if that's possible? I Maybe. I'll definitely reach out. We'll see what happens. Uh, did you see Blumhouse is making a new Blair Witch project? I did see that. Um, I mean, I would be excited, but Blumhouse is involved. So, But, I mean, I love found footage. So if they can do a, a found footage movie, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I like the Blair Witch um 2016. I saw that in the theaters. I thought that that was really good. It's not as good as the original, but I thought it was really good. Uh, what 90s comedies would you like to see get a 4K next? Well, I'll say The Mask. I'll just say The Mask, and I'll also say Dumb and Dumber. I'll say Happy Gilmore. I'll say Billy Madison. Like All my favorites growing up, Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler stuff, for sure. I thought it was very good. It's cold now, though, Jesse, because I've been going about an hour and a half talking to you lovely people. All right, guys, got to skip ahead a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm freaking half hour behind. What is wrong with me? Uh, do, 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 do. What is wrong with me? Can't wait for the Crow 4K Steelbook and 2 come out. I love that movie. My dad took me to see it opening night. Yeah, I cannot I cannot wait to watch it as well. Yeah, I'll have to check that out and see if the quality is any better than my Blu-ray sets. Um, I want to check that out for sure. Amazon delivered mine. It was late though. All right, guys, I'm scrolling down. I did. You guys inspired me to, to box up all my slips, throw them away. No, I was going to do it when I reorganized my Blu-rays, but I just ended up keeping them on there because the last thing I want to do is take them all off and put them in a box and then be like, ah, I'm going to get them back out again. I didn't have to re-slip everything. So until I figure it out, I kept them on there because um, they're a part of the release. But I just, I don't care as much about, I'm, I'm trying to break myself of caring as much about them as I used to, which wasn't much. I was never like super obsessive about them, but I really don't like Disney 
for not caring about physical media, not releasing Barbarian on Blu-ray and DVD. Disney just makes me mad for not caring about physical media. I hope Sony can release it. Yeah, man, that still burns me to this day, as I'm sure it does everybody else. Barbarian was a great, a great horror film that came out in 2022. And here we are in 2024, still talking about that movie getting physical. Everything else is getting physical. You know, it feels like anyway, that went to theaters. Like they're treating Barbarian like it was a streaming movie. It was not. It was in theaters. It made a box office. It made money. It, it I think it like tripled or quadrupled its budget. Like people saw it. People liked it. The buzz was out and they didn't put it out on physical. Like that's just so weird to me. Like I, and it, it just feels like they forgot about it. And I, I don't know, like, I understand like everybody working in Disney, like nobody cares. And half of them probably don't even know they have Barbarian. But like that was us. I'm sure that's what it's like over there. And that's why Sony's, that's why they had to pawn all the stuff, all the responsibilities off the Sony because they didn't know what to do with anything. Um, but, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get it when the, when the Sony partnership kicks in. I, that's all I can say. It's, it's still something that just pisses me off to this day. Um, but I did get another super chat from Jar Jar Ed. Thank you, Dark. Dar are you Jar Jar Ed or are you Dark Helmets? Uh, the director of both Joker movies came out uh, and said it's only called Joker to attach it to DC and get his movie made purposefully, not the comic Joker. Yeah, I heard that too. Like, he's like, I had this script and uh, I wanted to get it made. And they're like, well, this sounds like a Joker movie. So make it Joker and then we'll make it for you. And that's how I got it made, which is crazy because Todd Phillips is an established filmmaker. Um, so it's crazy that he would have to do that to get a movie like that made, but look, I guarantee you made a shit ton of money off of that film that he wouldn't have made if it wasn't a Joker movie. So he's got to be somewhat happy about it. And I also remember back then they were like, this will never get a sequel or I'll never do a sequel or something. And then it was like a couple months later, well, maybe I'll do a sequel if the if uh, if I get the right idea when they, they saw how much money it made, get the right idea or the movie makes a shit ton of money and the studio's like, hey, you need to make a freaking sequel or we'll make it for you. Um, so, yeah, but I look, they're making it like they're doing something interesting. They're not just trying to do the same thing again. That's why I like the musical idea. Cause it's different and it's not going to feel the same as the first one. So I'm down for it. I can, I can't wait. It's, it's probably that and alien Romulus and Nosferatu. They're probably my top three most anticipated for the rest of the year. Top three. All right. Uh, who did I have pop in here? I thought I saw somebody. People who don't like physical media are clearly deranged and evil. Uh, let's see. No Atmos on the Crow 4K and only 66 gigabyte disc. Really? I haven't looked into it like that. Yeah, it should still look fine. You know, I'm sure they're not going to put the special features on there, so it'll probably be fine. Um, video game Jerome, so it's not BD100. Uh, Steelbook Obsessed, what's going on, Jake? How you doing, buddy? I need to know your thoughts on the movie Heavyweights from 1995. Um, I, I love that movie, dude. I used to watch that all the time. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, but I, I need to get that and rewatch it. Does that have a Blu-ray or is it just on DVD? I can't, I can't quite remember. Um, but yeah, that's Ben Stiller. Like that's a, that's a great comedy, great kids movie. Um, and definitely as a kid that was overweight myself and is still kind of overweight, I related to that movie like no other back in the day. Oh, we had Bobby pop in. What's up, Bobby? I promoted the stream earlier we did last night. So there you go. There's your free promotion for the night, Bobby. Hope you appreciate that. Jake was also on there with me last night as well. Uh, and go, you know, subscribe to Jake. And he's he's growing his YouTube channel, doing great stuff over there. So go check him out. Um, how would you rent, rent them or rank them, Emmett? Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, that's pretty easy for me to rank. Number eight is the remake, of course. That's the worst. Uh, number seven. Um, this is this is where it gets a little dicey for me. Um, do I count Freddy versus Jason? That would be nine if I count that right. Let's count Freddy versus Jason. Number nine is the remake. Number eight is Freddy versus Jason. Number seven is 
I guess Freddy's Dead. I do like Freddy's Dead, though. Uh, number six is Nightmare 2, which is probably the most controversial opinion that I have. I, I'm That movie's growing on me, but I did not used to like it at all. Um, Nightmare 2 is number six. Number five would be Nightmare 5, uh, Dream Child. Number four would be um, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Number three would be um, Dream Warriors. Number two would be Dream Master. I love Dream Master. Uh, Nightmare 4. And number one would be the original. So there you go. Geez, Dune 2 is selling out like Oppenheimer did. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. That movie killed it. The box office. I mean, you had to see that coming. Uh, yeah, we. I, I did see the Maxine trailer. My wife and I talked about it on our live stream. Which, guys, look. There's 208 people in here. You haven't subscribed to my wife and I's channel. We do a channel where we talk about new movies. Um, you know, we do reviews. We do live streams every Monday. We cover movie news. And it's fun. We have a good time. Uh, so that link is down below. Hit the link, Mary with Media, and hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate it. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed the. I thought it was a great trailer. There's been really good trailers this week. Like Maxine was a really great trailer. And Joker was a really great trailer. Joker too. All right. I met Don at Dragon Wilson. I bumped into him at Trader Joe's. He's also a martial artist and action movie star. Nice. Nice bend over. Yeah, I got to check that one out, uh, Garrett. Jennifer Love Hewitt still looks fire. Yeah, she's on Instagram, isn't she? I think I follow her on there. Yeah, she was she was definitely like uh I know Garrett did the the rad crushes earlier this year. She would be like probably top three for me. Like and not for I know what you did last summer, but Can't Hardly Wait was like one of my favorite movies as a teenager, and she was a big reason why it was. So I uh, she would be in my like top three crushes as a kid for sure. Uh what's the oldest package in your collection that you still haven't seen? Um, that's a tough one. The oldest package. Sure. There's a lot of stuff. That'd be something I'd have to really go back and, and think about or, and actually look all my boutique stuff's on the floor. Yeah. That'd be a hard one to think off the top of my head. Blank check does need a 4K. You're 100% right, Jake. 100% right. Yeah, I feel like they would do that, Garrett. I feel like they would put them all together, probably the whole bloody affair. But I do want my options to watch them separately. As long as they give me my option to watch them separately, I'll be good because I'm not in that camp. I watch them separately. They're two movies. I saw them in the theaters as two movies. You know, I saw Kill Bill in the theaters in 2003. I saw Kill Bill Volume 2 in the theaters in 2004. They're two movies to me. I know Quentin doesn't consider that, and a lot of people don't. But to me, they're two movies. So I want my option to watch them separately. I don't want to have to watch them together. Um, even though I, I do want to try the whole bloody affair. I haven't seen it. Whatever happened to Gravity on 4K, that would be amazing 4K, especially with the Atmos. Um, they just they canceled it. But I have heard rumors that maybe it'll come back. But yeah, they canceled it, which was very disappointing because it would have sounded and looked fantastic. That movie, I love that movie too. I think it's freaking amazing. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't find those. I couldn't find those at all. Oh, there's a good pick. See, Corky Romano's 2000s, I believe. I think that's 2001, Captain Horror, but I, I would agree it's a super underrated comedy for sure. For sure. I enjoyed the comedies, 90s movie, Dick with Christian. Oh, that's a good one, Mohawk. That's a great one. I love Dick. I love Dick. Somebody don't clip. Don't clip that. Um, but that's a great movie. That's a, does that have a Blu-ray? I need that. Um, we had that on VHS. I used to watch it all the time. Uh, Kirsten Dunst, Michelle Williams. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Between that and bring it on like that. Kirsten Dunst was probably, was probably in my uh, crushes as well. 
and Michelle Williams, to be honest. But yeah, D- Dick's a great movie. That's a great movie. Um, everybody's doing some. I, I need to do a, a stream. We just need to do a stream talking about underrated 90s and 2000s comedies. Like, to be honest, there was a time when that's all that I watched. Like, literally all that I watched was comedies. I love all those movies. Ready to Rumble, Joe Dirt, Bubble Boy, Neither Roxbury. Loved all those movies. I still got the VHS of Neither Roxbury. It's like, it like uh, shines and sparkles and stuff. Re- really cool. Uh, would you ever do a guest commentary for a movie if you were invited? What movie would you pick to do it? I, I just don't know if I'd be good at something like that. It would have to be a movie that I just knew very well. Um and I wouldn't get invited to a movie like that because it would be like a big movie. Um, so, yeah, if I was ever invited to it, I'm not going to say I would turn it down because, I mean, geez, what an honor. Um, but I would need that movie and I would have to watch it like 10 times before I did the auto commentary and made notes. I, I would be so nervous for that. But, uh, yeah, for sure. I, I would love to do my own commentaries and stuff. I've done it like maybe one time. I did the psycho watch along, but. I don't know. Those are always kind of rough. Uh, I don't think it's canceled. I think it'll come out at some point, but it's probably not going to be till the fall, I would assume. Uh, let's see. What's up, John? How you doing, buddy? John Cooley's here. Hey, Ken, I'm just getting here. Hope all is well. I saw something today that showed Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dad is being remade. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't watched that trailer yet. Somebody wanted me to react to that, and I was like, do you just want me to rant? like nonstop, like, cause that's what that would be. Um, and maybe that movie doesn't deserve that. Maybe it's, it's okay. So, you know, uh, yeah, it was, I, I didn't say it was too hard, but I, I, I think it's kind of still open for interpretation, you know, There you go. You summed it up better than I could. Uh, I think Sweeney was the best part of Madam Web. They tried to ugly her up, but it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. They were wearing like um, sweat sweatshirts and pants the whole time. And it's like they're in their costumes for like maybe two minutes in the, in the whole movie. I don't know if I'll ever watch that, to be honest. Uh, I mean, money, AV nerd. I mean, they, they look at what's, what they can get for the cheapest, what the studios want them to put out, what they can get from the studios, um, what they think is going to sell. There's a variety of, of things that go into it. Um, but yeah, dumb and dumber all way. Oh yeah. You got that, you got that, uh, got that dumb and dumber pick. Dude, I would die. I want the Adam Sandler's comedies on four. I want the I want the freaking Rob, I still want the Rob Schneider 4K box set. When am I gonna get that? All right, we got Jar Jar Ed with a super chat. Did I miss that? Or did I get that already? I'm sorry if I missed that, uh Jar Jar. Uh the director of both Joker movies came out and said it's only called Joker to attach to the DC. Oh, yeah. I already read this. I already read this. But you Donated again, Jar Jar at another super chat. Thank you so much. Any reason why Mystery Men disappeared off Kino Lover's website? I was going to buy it and then it disappeared from my cart and it can't be found. Now something else I have to investigate. Uh, is it was it at least on Amazon? Where did Mystery Men go? I love Mystery Men. That 4K was really great too. All right, so it's on Amazon for twenty seven forty four. Was that in the sale originally? Um, I don't, I don't remember that being a part of the sale. So, let's see. I don't know. It's saying it's on here. It's twenty six fifty seven on the Kino Lover website. I don't think that was a part of the sale, though. So, if you try to get it for the sale, um, maybe that's why. I don't know. But it's on the Kino Lover website. It's on Amazon, as far as I can tell. But thank you for the super chat. I'll, I'll throw you a little. Throw you a little. Let's let's throw J Love back. What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? 
Come on, guys. We need our we need our Rob Schneider 4K collection. What are you waiting for? What are these studios waiting for? The Rob Schneider 4K collection. It would sell like hot cakes. We also need the uh, Ernest box set. Who? Somebody is just like sitting on a gold mine, not putting the Ernest movies out in some kind of like box set. Like that would be the hottest physical media item for the entire year that it came out. You think the freaking Friday the 13th box set was something? Like the Ernest box set would would appeal to everyone, not just horror fans, everyone. Nobody would not get the Ernest box set. It doesn't have to be 4K, just the Blu-ray box set with maybe some 4K scans, at least 4K scans on the four original theatrical Ernest movies. Camp, uh, Christmas, Scared Stupid, um, and Jail. 4K scans on those. And then regular Blu-rays for the others, all the stupid Africas and, and stuff. You could have some of his his TV stuff, his skit stuff on there as well uh, as some special features. And to go deep with the special features, like have commentaries, have people coming back to talk about Jim Varney as the actor, people that worked with him. Um, you're sitting on millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, not putting out an earnest box set. It's ridiculous to me. Um, yeah, it's it's a great movie. I always love The Mask. I saw that in the theaters. I remember seeing that in the theaters, and then we went to. Uh, does anybody remember DC Discovery Zone? Was that what it was? DZ? Was it DZ Discovery Zone? I guess yeah, that, that makes sense. DZ Discovery Zone, the place with all the the tubes and the the ball pits and stuff like that. I remember. I just remember that day for some reason. Uh, if I started a boutique label, what would I call it? Oh, I, I haven't even thought about that. Um, I had to just be my name, right? Mid-level, mid-level movies. <laughs> and I would have to get all mid-level movies. Not that I, I couldn't even get the mid-level stuff. I'd probably just get the lower level, bottom of the barrel stuff. Um but yeah, it'd be, it, I don't know, mid-level something. I'd probably have to come up with a better name than that. So it doesn't sound like a good brand name. Um, you know, this channel will probably be doing a lot better if I wasn't called mid-level media, if I'm being honest. But I, I, I look, I never thought that this channel would, would get this big. You know, maybe when I hit 100K, I'll switch it to next level media, you know, and in and, and 2055 when it happens. <laughs> Uh, Barbarian made a bigger profit than the, than the later movies. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Johnny Darko? Commando does need a 4K. I think that's Fox, though. Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, I'm all for more found footage movies. I don't care if Blumhouse is doing it. Like, how I, I feel like that Blumhouse could probably handle found footage. I mean, they did the paranormal activity movies, right? They, they can handle found footage. I don't see why not. Um, Syndicated media, nice, nice. Heavyweight says I have a blue. I have it. Nice, 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 nice. I still haven't gotten into the topic of the night, guys. The only thing that I wanted to let, let me do that real quick. I'll I'll pin uh what's up, Smirk? I'll pin Smirk's comment. Um let's do this real quick. I, I just wanted to comment on and we're already almost at midnight, guys. I've been going for almost two hours. I just wanted to comment on uh this video that my brother in law sent to me today. I don't even know if I want to play this. Um, I don't know. I don't think this would get my stream demonetized, but it could, but basically this is in the UK and it's, I guess it's a news broadcast called a current affair and it's titled the physical media comeback. And maybe I'll link this in the description when I get done. And this damn channel has 666 K subscribers. Guys, look, I need to say something real, real quick. I've been freaking myself out lately because I'm seeing 666 everywhere. Like all the time. I'm seeing it at least 10 times a day. Does anybody else have that problem? All the time. Like I work with a lot of numbers and the computer and stuff at work. And I'm seeing 666 constantly, like in my everyday life. And it's starting to freak me out. And I just saw it again. And you guys saw it with me on this freaking YouTube channel. But let me play a little bit of this, um, of this uh, clip right here. Um, I wonder if you guys can hear it. I might have to take it out, bring it up again, just to make sure that it's working. 
because I'm not going to be able to hear it when I start it unless I plug in my headset. All right. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the chat. If you guys can hear it, let me know because I'm not going to be. Now, if you've got a vinyl collection or some old DVDs laying around at home, it might be time to dig them out. The classics are cool again. And yes, about three. it is big business. I bet my whole stream gets taken down here in a second. Uh, just the convenience factor. Uh, let me scroll to the bottom nowadays for an artist real quick. Let me know if you guys can hear it. It's the great retro All right, Paul Allen says he can hear it. Everything old is new again. I don't want to be like talking over it, but they basically go to this guy's like collection. They're like, this guy's still collecting movies. Physical media is still alive. And they're like promoting that it's back and, and stuff. And it just feels like there's a lot of news organizations and in print media and that's trying to, you know, spin this narrative that physical media is coming back, you know. And, you know, that's cool. I think it's cool. But it's almost like people are because of... Um, a lot of people, I guess, in because of streaming services and how pricey they're getting, it's almost like people are trying to, you know, go back to the physical media days, which is awesome, you know, but it's like everybody's jumping on the bandwagon now, you know, so I don't know quite how I feel about it, but um, they're walking in a warehouse of physical media right there. Is that what that is? It's pretty cool. Anyway, guys, that, that's all the video I'm going to play. Like I said, I don't I don't want um, to get striked or anything. But there was another article that I saw that was put up at the beginning of the year that we can look at real quick. Um, but what do you guys let me know what you guys think about that in the chat? Just everybody. It is. It feels like within the past, it was almost like when Best Buy stopped selling physical media. Everybody woke up. Hey, physical media is important. We don't need to let this die. It was like they said, we're not selling physical media anymore. And then the fear of physical media dying set in. And then people almost were like, did a 180. And they're like, no, we can't let this happen. Let's start promoting this stuff again. There's actually, look at all these collectors over here. They're still collecting. This is really cool. Let's get back into physical media again. I don't know. What do you all think about that? But there, there was this other article that, um, it, this is from culture, the national news.com. Um, and this article says this was put out at the very beginning of the year. And there's there's so many of these types of articles. Like there's like a lot of them. Like when I put physical media resurgence, when I type that into Google, there's like 24 articles that have come out this year. Like everybody's pumping up physical media again, which again is super cool. Um, I'm not, I'm not trying to say like, I feel like I'm trying to be, I feel like I'm trying, I'm not trying to be an elitist when I say everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. I'm really not. I just, I find it interesting, I guess. Um, and like I said, it almost feels like it was spawned at a Best Buy not selling physical media anymore. And everybody's like promoting of that and the fear of losing it for good, like turn people around. And I think that's kind of funny because if it comes back into prominence again and Best Buy is just kind of left out in the cold now, they're like, shit. I guess we shouldn't have got rid of physical media and maybe they'll get back in within the next year or so. But how would that look? Would they take all the Walmart steel books back or would Walmart let them do that? I don't know. I, I just find the whole thing interesting. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I just want to have a conversation about it. I'm not trying to say it's bad or I'm not trying to be, you know, dismissive or people wanting to get back into physical media or anything like that. But uh, why 2024 is the year to start collecting uh, to the year to start a physical media collection from DVDs to vinyl. So this article right here was put up on January the 9th at the tail end of, of 2023, Netflix released a film. Oh, it could also be because of that. Leave the world behind movie as well, which I did not watch. I need to watch that movie to get that ending that everybody's talking about because I don't understand, I guess the context and the way that people are, are, are talking about it. Um, Netflix released a film imagining the horrors of the world without Netflix. Leave the World Behind by Egyptian-American director Sam Ismail is an apocalyptic story that zooms in on the smaller aspects of life as the world comes to an end. One thread throughout is a little girl and her tireless attempts to capture Wi-Fi to finish watching the last episode of Friends. Characters around her are concerned with life and death, but for, but for her, nothing is more important than the resolution 
of the Ross Rachel saga. To great luck, she finds a solution to her problem. Physical media. Oh, so this is basically spoiling the entire movie for me. Maybe I shouldn't read all this. Uh, so why digital media is coming up short. Uh, let's see. So what is the state of, of media consumption today and how is streaming affecting other modes of entertainment, such as gaming and music? Are we getting more for our money or are we being or are we blinded by the illusion of choice? Uh, when the age of streaming began, the promise was an endless catalog with a lower price, all delivered at the click of a button whenever we needed it. Not only film and TV, but music and gaming too. However, for film and TV in particular, in the age of Netflix, Disney Plus, OSN, Shahid, I don't even know these ones, uh, Stars Play and Amazon Prime Video, the cost to subscribe to all have surpassed what we previously paid for cable or satellite services, all with shallower libraries than we were promised. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. They had everything, right? Like these services had everything. Now, like the free services have more than the services we're paying $20 a month for. Like Tubi literally has everything. Tubi freaking has everything. Um, but uh, the, the Netflix, like they got a lot of originals, you know, which they built up that library of originals. And they they every single month they cycle out all these movies. Like they have movies for a month and then they throw them all out and then they bring new ones in. Um, so that's interesting. For example, we've all had to experience the trying of trying to find a movie. And if it's not streaming original, it becomes very difficult to find. Hell, if it's even a streaming original, it's still hard to find. And they got rid of Hush. Mike Flanagan's Hush is not on Netflix. That was an original Netflix movie. So I don't know what, what's happening with that. Yeah, Ben, um, pretty much, guys, when a boutique announcement happens, look the movie up on Tubi. It's probably on there. Like, they have, like, all the Arrow stuff. They've got a ton of imprint stuff. They've got a ton of Umbrella stuff. They've got a ton of, I'm not saying Criterion, but they've got a lot of Vinegar Syndrome stuff as well. Like, nine times out of ten, like, these movies are going to be on Tubi. I feel like, anyway, every single time I look one up, it's on freaking Tubi. So, I mean, that's definitely something to know because you can sample a lot of these movies before you buy them if you're into that kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's all very interesting, guys. Uh, you may think purchasing digital media such as Apple iTunes or Amazon offers a solution, uh, but even so-called bought digital media only grants you access to it, not ownership of it. If the film is purchased from these services, you can watch it all you like, but if they lose the rights to holding that film, then it's gone from your library regardless of what you paid for. Yeah, I mean, they're they're all saying the same crap that we've been saying for a while now. It's just everybody's waking up to it because we had a lot of instances last year where stuff that people have bought, they're losing. And, you know, I, I know that Sony's like a big culprit of that. And there's, there's stuff that HBO Max originals, like their shows like Westworld, they're just pulling off of there. Um, so yeah, and they're they're using it as tax write-offs and and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean, look, I'm glad I'm glad people are waking up uh, to physical media. And yeah, they go into the Warner Brothers Discovery stuff. Um, let's see, and then they they uh, they talk about how to get into physical media. Sadly, just as more and more people come to grips with the shortcomings of the digital and streaming age, physical media is disappearing from public spaces. In the U.S., the retail chain Best Buy began removing all its physical media stocks for good at the start of the year. In the region, retailers such as Borders have become less bookshops and more stationary or toy stores. There is hope, however. In the world of film in particular, boutique Blu-ray labels such as Criterion Aero Video, Powerhouse Indicator, and Kino Lorber continue to pop up. They not only painstakingly restore films and TV shows, often with the involvement of the original filmmakers, but they also provide a host of extras. It's a lost art since the demise of the DVD to make movies feel less... Um, God, I can't even pronounce that word. <laughs> I can't, I'm not even going to try. As behind the scenes and critical features allow viewers to dive deeper into the world, into the work at hand. 
So yeah, they're promoting all the boutique labels and stuff. They're, they're trying to let people know how cool physical media is. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, guys, if you want to check out this article, I'll try to link this one down below as well um, after the stream. But let me let me take this down, get back to the chat here. But I just find it interesting um, that it feels like people are gravitating back to physical media. I don't think everybody will, but I think that people that really love film are waking up. I think that there's a lot of people that are waking up and people that went digital maybe 10 years ago that are like, you know what? Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Maybe I need to, the movies that I love, I need to get in my collection. And maybe they start discovering some of these cool boutique releases of these movies that they love because there's a lot of them. And they start diving back into the world of physical media. And, you know, they kind of get hooked as we all do. And that could lead to a maybe not a large scale resurgence, but I think a smaller scale resurgence, a reserved resurgence. Um, I, I think that's cool. I think it's cool. F ephemeral ephemeral is that how you pronounce it thank you gary i can barely talk at this but i got i've been talking a lot this stream like my my throat is extremely dry um but yeah those articles are all over the place they're literally all over the place i think it's fascinating all right let me head back up guys i'm gonna read the rest of the chats and um We'll get back into it. Let's do it, Garrett. What do you want to do? We're, let's do one for um, sidekicks. Let's do one for ladybugs. How about that? That could be cool. Um, me, myself. I love me, myself, and Irene, Gary. That's <laughs> that's such a good one. Uh, Vagisil. Vagisil on aisle five. Vagisil. Someone's baking bread, and I think it's sourdough. That's such a good movie. That is that that is the underrated Jim Carrey movie for sure. That's 2000s though. That's 2000. That's the most underrated Jim Carrey movie because nobody talks about it. And it's it's one of his funniest movies. Um, I love it. Rob, he's great in Home Alone too. You're right about that. But I love the stupid Rob Schneider uh, comedies like Animal and Hot Chick and Deuce Bigelow. What's up, Jordos? It's all right, dude. I'm glad you're here for a little bit. I went way longer than I wanted to. We got Mohawk Vader within our $2, $2 Super Chat. Thank you so much, Mohawk. Saving Silverman and Without a Paddle. Great films. Um, I don't remember loving Without a Paddle, but Saving Silverman for sure was was really awesome. Really cool movie. Um, and we got Mohawk Vader with another Super Chat. $2. Thank you so much, Mohawk. Uh, when $5 Walmart Steelbook Hunt. Got 41 Lions Gates. Nice. You got 41? Are you freaking kidding me? You got 41 Lions Gates Steelbooks, Mohawk? Are you freaking nuts? Did you really get that many? There was that many to get? Or did you just grab duplicates? Because maybe you're looking to sell them later. Um, I mean, that's cool, though. That's cool. All right, guys. <clears throat> I'm losing it. Uh, Travis Rice, hey, Ken, did you see the news? The boutique label Film Arena is switching all their steelbook releases to discless steelbooks with digital codes. What? I got to look into that, Travis. What? What? I gotta, what is Film Arena anyway? I don't think I've heard of Film Arena. Is that an overseas label? What are you waiting for? What am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? Fuck you. Uh, everyone sleeps on the sixth day with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I got to get that one. I got to get that one on Blu-ray. I'm trying to find that one in the wild though. Cause I looked it up on, uh, Amazon. I think it was like 15 bucks. I'm like, I'm not willing to pay $15 for the sixth day, just a regular Blu-ray. So maybe I can find that at like a half price books or something. The mask is a good one, mama. The mask is a good one. Uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Saw that as cinema as a kid. I still don't have that movie in the collection. I've seen that movie though. It needs a 4K. <laughs> Grind it. They are having an MVD sale. Good call, molester. <laughs> uh, they are having a uh, MVD sale. Yeah, definitely, definitely go check out uh, Grindhouse tomorrow. I don't know what all that's going to entail, but yeah. Uh, uh, 
recently released 4K of one cut. Is that the uh, Francis Ford Coppola film? That got announced from Lionsgate this week, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm going to try to get that one, yeah. I'm going to try to get that one. Next level media goes hard. Hopefully so, man. Hopefully. It's got to go harder than mid-level. It just has to at this point. Um, high mid-level media. <laughs> Oh, thank you all so much for the for more six six sixes. Oh, it'd been funny as hell if I just looked down in the entire chat. Six 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 all the way down. <laughs> you freaking jerks! Uh, it looks like the mic is my thumb. Should I? Are you saying I should lower it a little bit? Uh, let's see. Oh, it's Australia. Yeah, I did watch it. It's Australian, isn't it? Yeah, it's Australian. I'm sorry, guys. Are you kidding me? Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, man, I think it is. I think it is. Probably right about that. I don't think Blank Check will ever get a 4K. Does it have a Blu-ray, though? I don't... It probably does from the movie club. Paul saw it the other day. Yeah. My brother-in-law sent that to me this morning. I mean, it looks, I mean, a, a lot of people, I, I interviewed somebody from Australia, uh, collector uh, creations, I think was his channel name. So go check him out. But, um, you know, he had a lot of Blu-rays and DVDs in his collection. No slip covers or anything like that. Pretty much the only boutiques they got over there is Umbrella and Imprints. Um, unless they want to import, which be, is becoming increasingly more difficult for them in Australia right now. So you're not going to see a lot of boutique stuff in the Australian uh, collection. And to be honest, like because of that, because they're conditioned to just collect regular uh, Blu-rays, like they don't care about slip covers. They don't really care about packaging and stuff down in Australia, I feel like. You know, unless they're collecting Umbrella and, and Second Sight. I think he was collecting some Second Sight stuff, too. Um, yep, the Surge. The Resurge or the Surge. Oh, yeah, the, the Glow in the Dark one. Physical Media is king. I'm trying to get friends off streaming and everything. Yeah, man, we, we all just got to work together, man. It can feel grim sometimes in this space. It really can, you know, because it's it's like we're all together in this little bubble and it's like nobody else is joining us here. And it's like I, you guys are literally the only people I can talk to about this kind of stuff because I, I go to work like nobody's collecting physical media there that, that I know of. I haven't found them. They all know I like movies and physical media. They know I got a channel, so nobody's approached me about it. So... Um, but I try to tell people, I try to tell people every single day, it's just, you don't have to be crazy. You don't have to be like me and go grab everything and, 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 you know, feel like you got to get all these boutique labels, but like go buy the stuff you love at least, um, and add it to your collection. So, and maybe you'll fall in love with it in the process. Uh, watch Best Buy kick itself and get back to the physical media after a year or two. It'd be pretty funny, wouldn't it? Oh, now you guys come crawling back now that we're doing good again, now that we're surging. But you weren't there for us when we were at our lowest. Screw you, Best Buy. Screw you. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with more people jumping on the bandwagon and be great for the collectors and me. Uh, absolutely, man. I'm Look, I'm all for it. I wasn't trying to say that. It probably came out that way, but I wasn't really trying to, you know, be, a, be an elitist or anything like that. Uh, digital media you don't own, even if you buy, you can remove it from your library. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Media outlets looking for clicks. Yeah, pretty much it's like a complete 180. Physical media is dying. Best Buy is gone. Now it's really dead. Oh, physical media is back a couple months later. It's crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. I try, man. I can only do so much, though. Uh, they don't need to be crazy and have 2,000 deaths like us. But like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what I'm saying, man. That was that was a big one, too. That was in November, right? Or was that October? I think it was November Oppenheimer came out. So that, that would have been after the Best Buy thing, too. So I think, yeah, a combination of Best Buy, Stop and Sell and Physical Media, Christopher Nolan and Oppenheimer. 
Um, and then um, that movie, that Netflix movie, and uh, all the streaming services, like, you know, getting rid of people's movies that they bought. Like that, all that contributed. I think it just all came together in one spot. And then the rising cost of streaming services as well. That definitely contributed. Um, I don't know why, guys, but the later I go, the more people keep coming in the chat. 238 people are currently joining us tonight on uh, on Physical Media Tonight. That's what I'm calling this new series that I do on the channel. Physical Media Tonight. That's my new live stream uh, series. Ken's home video is dead, guys. It's dead. Um, when I started buying 4K Blu-rays in 2017, my friends thought I was crazy. They thought I was wasting my money. I could watch anything on Netflix. Who got the last laugh now? Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, thank you, Mama. I think it's been a pretty weak year for the four, for 4K thus far. Um, You know what? I think there's been a lot of good stuff. There has, but I... I tend to agree with you because I was, I wanted to do a top 10 four Ks of the year so far. And I was like, damn, you know, they're really, I feel like I had more to talk about last year around this time. I really feel like I have more to talk about. There's definitely stuff to talk about, but I feel like I have more to talk about. So I'm kind of with you. Um, hopefully things ramp up. Yeah, they have. They have. Correct. I watch TV when I do stream something to sample a film, have canceled all paid streamers. They absolutely. Yeah. I mean, look, if it wasn't for my kids and my wife, like, and the fact that we have a channel, we try to watch stuff on there sometimes and review it. Peacock is like a great streaming service, like, because all the universal movies like go straight there. Um, so we watch Night Swim. We watched, um, uh, you know, Lisa Frankenstein the other night and they get other stuff as well. They got original shows and I, they got WWE, like, I don't know for how much longer because that's going to Netflix, but I've been using Peacock a lot. And I think that's only like what, six, $7 a month. Like, so Peacock's a great service. Um, but Netflix I've hardly used and that's like $17 a month and HBO max. Um, I'm just keeping HBO max till we get house of the dragon. Then I might cancel that one as well. What's up, Steve? I just joined the stream, but if it has not been said with all the newer tech, they need to start making cheaper Blu-ray players that would get more people into at least buying the 4K players. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree with that. Uh, a lot of people got scared when they seen Sony taking away digital movies. They knew it could happen but never thought they'd see it yeah 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 they can't keep subscribers in the old steel libraries of producing new content is expensive it was all fun and games in the beginning you know they that's that's the thing with the subscriber model like it can never grow because the only way it can grow there's only so many people that can subscribe you know or are willing to subscribe and even have internet and a good enough internet service too. There's still people that live in rural areas that can't do Netflix or there's still people that don't have internet. Um, there's only a certain number of those people. Like, yeah, there's more being born every day, but there's only a certain number, a number of people in the world that can subscribe. So once that's done, how are you going to get more money? You know, how are you going to grow as a business? You got to charge more. That's the only way. And then you run the risk of running those people away. So that's the problem with the streaming model. Um, whereas physical media, I feel like there's room to grow, to expand. Um, or maybe it's the same thing, but I feel like it's different. I feel like it's a, it's different. Uh if I've got 176 likes with 226 people watching, that's that's great to me. Is that true? Do I really have that many likes? I'm showing 91. Maybe I got to jump back into it. Um, 189 likes. I mean, I've been going for a while, but thank you all so much for hitting the like button. I really appreciate that because I don't think I've ever done a stream where I've gotten 200 likes um, <laughs> by the time the stream ends. So that that's really freaking cool. Thank you all so much. Um, I might do a code giveaway or something. 
if I got something laying around. I don't know if I gave away the major league 4K digital code. Maybe I'll give that away tonight. Um, if we hit 200 likes, which we're only six away, if we hit 200 likes, I'll um, I'll give away the major league digital code for you guys. But thank you all so much. Yeah, I looked. Look, I got a video coming where I went to my Walmart and I checked for those. Um, and spoiler alert, I couldn't find them. So, uh, but I tried. I dug deep into that bin to try. I really did. Uh, that was a great 4K. I love Blade. I love Blade Runner 2049. I need to rewatch that. Oh yeah, Garrett said he's down for anything Brandis. Yeah, I, Jonathan Brandis movies. I I liked all of his movies when I was a kid. Never Ending Story two was my my favorite Never Ending Story. I watched I rewatched that one all the time because the first one was just so dark and just made me feel weird as a kid. So I always rewatched the second one. Um, I just thought it was a little lighter in tone. But I think the first one's definitely better. Um, uh, what's up, Crazy Joe? How you doing, buddy? Hey, just got home from seeing Immaculate. Terrible. It's the first time with no style. Crazy Joe, did you do you not realize that I had the director in here and you're calling this movie terrible? How could you? Michael, if you're still in here, your movie's not terrible. It's It's amazing. So don't listen to Crazy Joe. He's crazy for a reason. Um, I disagree, man. It's, it's more artsy. I, I can see the first omen being more like studio. Like it's probably like the conjuring and, and stuff like that. But I, the immaculates it's artsy. I think it has a lot of style to it and it's very reminiscent of, of movies like Rosemary's baby. So, um, I recommend immaculate over the first omen for one simple reason. The director of the first omen was not in my chat earlier tonight. So there you go. <sighs> yeah, Ladybugs. I And to be honest, I bought the Blu-ray not too long ago, but uh, I haven't seen the movie in probably 15 years. I really haven't. But I watched that movie probably 50 times as a kid. Um, I haven't checked it out yet. I never partake in the Target buy two, get one sales. Unless I can find something in stores, I never do the online stuff. Um. Mm. Oh, I got the Studio Canal releases, beautiful transfer, so Lionsgate announcement today. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's usually what happens. Studio Canal puts it out first, and then a little bit later, you'll get one from uh, from uh, Lionsgate. Uh, thank you, Drake. I appreciate that. Regarding the new Rocky 4Ks, are they going to fix the issues from the previous releases? Look, I'm going to check on this myself. The only problem is, is that they're saying they require a receipt for purchase. And I got my Rocky 4Ks from, from Warner Brothers. They sent them to me or to review. So I don't have a receipt for purchase for that. Um, so I'm going to maybe have to explain that. But I'm going to try to um, email them and see what they say. But I've seen from people, they've emailed them and they said as long as they require proof of, they give them proof of purchase, um, they'll replace the disc. So there, there, are disc replace, there are replacement discs being worked on. I don't think they're done yet, but they're being worked on. And if you contact them, they will send them to you. If you uh, show them proof that you bought it. Um, but I would assume the new collection would, they would be fixed. Yes. Uh, yo, it's live. Yes, this is live. Your guess is good as mine. I hope we at least get the first one this year on 4k because they're already showing screenings of it. You know, at, at panic, at panic fest, they just did a screening of nightmare on Elm street. In 4K. So hopefully we at least get that this year, but I want them all. All of them on 4K. Just do it all. Oh, nice. That's it. I love that movie. That's a great movie. All right, guys. I'm going to be finishing up in the chat in the chat. Try to get to everybody that I can. If y'all have any last minute uh questions, go ahead and fire away. Um push books in Australia, but it's very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Perez says, I started recollecting last year and I have many of my faves. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to, I didn't want to sound like I was coming off that way. Um, the more the merrier, of course. Everybody that's into physical media, come on over. Come on. We'll take you with open arms over here at Mid-Level Media. Um, but yeah, man. 
yeah we we need it we need it uh to keep this alive yeah american hustle 4k i do want that i want that steel book yeah we do we do you're preaching to the choir richard preaching to that choir uh, remember when trades were reporting Watchmen HBO was being pulled, the physical disc sold quick. Yeah. Yeah, is that still sold out? Uh, I can never cancel any of the streamers. Too much great stuff. Muppets Mayhem, Star Wars shows on Disney+, Plus, Star Trek Discovery, Strange New Worlds. Yeah, there's a lot of exclusive content on there, um, and I completely get that. I mean, it's, I, I'm of the mindset that streaming and physical can coexist. I don't see any reason why they can't because they're both, you know, movies and TV. Like, they're both getting people into um the the art form the medium you know um so i i'm all for it and i i think at this point i think the battle that we're fighting right now is not necessarily physical versus streaming i think it's movies themselves um holding up over time and being popular as an art form because I think that the kids coming up, the next generation, I don't think they're going to be as interested in, in movies and TV shows. I'm, I hope I'm wrong, but they're more interested in YouTubers and streamers and stuff like that. Um, I just don't think that kids are going to have the same appreciation for the stuff that we do. So when we die off, like I feel like the battle is let's keep movies alive. So if streaming, you know, in, in conjunction with physical media can help that, then I'm all for it. I'm all for any way that people can experience uh, you know, movies and TV, but physical is better, you know, is what I'm saying. Uh, DVDs, Blu-rays are my media backup to stuff. I enjoy Yeah, Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, oh, we hit two thirteen. We hit two thirteen likes. Uh, so let's, let's give away the major league uh, code right here. Can you guys see that? Boom. And you got to redeem it before April the 2nd, 2026. So there you go, guys. And if you haven't checked out my Major League 4K Steelbook review, go check it out. I dropped it on Sunday night. I dropped it at a weird time, like 9 p.m., so maybe you missed it. But check out my review of Major League on 4K if you want to know my thoughts. All right, cool. Thank you, Mama. I think it was Mama's promotional like button that got it. I, I've never seen that many likes on a stream before. Never. Um, the promise of streaming was a true lie. I agree. I agree. Uh, Chadwick says, I think physical media is really strong in Europe. Here in the U.S., it seems like the powers at large have made the decision to crush the market of physical media here in Australia. I, I don't think you're wrong. I do feel like it. I try not to be a conspiracy theory type of guy, but I, I do feel like it's a conspiracy, like the studios versus um, the movie fans. It's like they don't want us to own it. It's like they want it to, they want us to watch it once in the theaters and then whenever they decide to put it on streaming and then they take it off. It's like they want to be able to dictate when we can watch their movie. I don't get that. It's just weird to me, but it's almost like they want to take it from us so we don't rewatch it. So we'll go spend more money on the newest thing they're putting out. I don't know. Does anybody else feel that way? Because that's how I feel. I feel like that's like conspiracy theory territory, but I don't know. Um, John Doe Juggalo, what's going on, buddy? Thank you for joining. We're just wrapping up, but uh, you can go check out the replay if you want. I've been going for two and a half hours, and I only meant to go an hour and 15, an hour, hour and a half tonight, but. It was a good chat and you guys were great and there was some great conversation and, and I'm still blown away that the director of Immaculate was actually in here. Uh, that's still mind blowing to me. Red 2 Movie Collection Steelbook came out. Not only did my Walmart not have it, they didn't have it in mine either, but they did have the Cutthroat Island. They don't have a selection of movies to choose from. Groove is, but I think Groove is better too. They blow them out of the water to be honest. You know what? I haven't really dove into Indicator yet. I thought about picking stuff up for them last year, but uh, I didn't. Um, I didn't do it. So I probably won't grab anything from the sale because I've just gone too crazy on the Kino stuff. Um, and if I'm going to dive into more sale stuff, it's going to be Kino again before they're done. <laughs> it has an audio error. My goodness, they can't make anything right these days. 
Uh, also, the extended TV cut is Blu-ray only. Too many small mistakes on catalog releases. Damn. Damn, damn. I thank, thank you so much, Richard. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you all. I really do. Um, streaming won't be around within when the apocalypse happens. Yeah. When the apocalypse happens, we probably won't be around. So <laughs> our physical media collections will be um, in our houses, though, for people. The, the strongest, you know, that survived to come in loot. Maybe they can use it as currency. I, I don't know. Um, oh, it's only 90. Well, that's a good deal. That's not bad. Jordan, I don't know what to say other than he's he's a fan of the channel. You know, somebody that works with big time actresses like Sydney Sweeney. Um, who's that one kid that was in Pokemon? I can't uh, Justice Justice Smith or something. He was in Voyeurs, you know, popped in my chat to hang out. You know, he likes physical media. He's watching me. What what can I say? You know, big time Hollywood director watching Ken from mid-level media. You know, at first, first I won an Oscar, you know, for a for a studio back in 2021 or 2022, whenever that was. And now I've got Hollywood directors watching me. So pretty much like I'd say within six months, I'll be living in Hollywood, you know, with this big like pool in my in my back apartment area. Um, I'll be wearing sunglasses, Versace shirts. Um, you guys won't even recognize me anymore and I won't have time for this. You know, I'll be too busy making moves, big Hollywood moves, you know, call me Hollywood Ken. Um, I'm joking, everybody, by the way, some people don't. I feel like some people don't um, understand that I'm joking sometimes. I know that a lot of people understand my humor, but I got this comment today that really like kind of upset me. And I don't get upset by comments a lot. Somebody, it was like my last live stream and they were like, because I'm my, in my real day job, guys, I'm, um, I'm a supervisor. I'm a warehouse supervisor and I have been for 12 years. Um, so apparently in a, in a live stream some time ago, I talked, we were talking about people being late and I'm like, when people are late at my job, I say, why are you late? You should be at work on time, no matter what. I'm sure I said something along those lines and people take me so freaking seriously. Somebody wrote out like five paragraphs about how I'm a bad manager and a bad supervisor because I would berate somebody for being late for any reason. And I'm like, I'm only being half serious anyway. Even though I would question somebody if they're late, obviously you're late. Well, why were you late? I don't berate anybody. Um, I've never been like that as a manager. Everybody that I've ever been in charge of would tell you that. I treat everybody with respect always. And this person wrote like five paragraphs. They're like, I'm, I run my own business. If you worked for me, you wouldn't work for me for very long. And I'm just like, what the hell? Like there's such a weird comment. And it's like, off of a joke. Like it's just, I don't know. It upset me. I'll be honest. I don't, I don't like, uh, cause I've been doing this for 12 years and I, I, I feel like I'm a, I'm a good boss. I try to treat people like they, like I would want to be treated with respect. And I wouldn't, I would never talk down to anybody. So if you're watching that person, let that comments, I think you're rude. Okay. And you don't, I, you obviously don't understand humor. So get out of here with that crap. But anyway, I'm sure you guys didn't really care to hear that, but I decided to tell the story anyway. Uh, but yeah, guys, we're done. Uh, we got Frank's media and reviews. He just started his channel not too long ago. Go check him out. He's got a great channel. Um, hit the subscribe button. Got Josh. I love the immaculate Cena Sweeney. Yeah, she was, she was great. Like that's that scene at the end was great. Um, I've gone Hollywood. Yeah. 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 I basically know Sydney Sweeney. Yeah. Ba basically, you know, basically you could say that. Um, but that's the stream guys. Thank you all for keeping me far longer than I intended to be here. This was just meant to be a, an hour long live stream talking about the, the greatest comedy of the two thousands, the ladies man, and it spiraled into a bunch of other conversations. So, but I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, hit the like button, you know, one more time. 218 likes. Maybe we can get to 250, guys. If you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button. 
um, comments on the stream. That always helps with the engagement as well. I always appreciate that. And thank y'all. Just thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. I, I thought this was a great stream and I really enjoyed it. And um, I appreciate you guys. Again, have a great night. Enjoy your, your collection, your movies. Um, and we'll see you next time.